Good evening, everybody. We are live and welcome to the Freak Show number 19. So, first of all, we have Stig. How are you, Stig? I'm very well, thank you. I'm uh, supping some Dinky Dye uh, beer. A new invention. Excellent. Uh, Mechanised, how are you? Hello, everyone. I'm doing very well. I've got my uh, gin and tonic ready. Excellent. And ladies and gentlemen, our amazing guest, uh, world-renowned... Um, the Knight of the British Empire, or officer, but it should be a knight, Jason Kingsley! Yay! I've got a nice cup of tea. So. Excellent. Well, cheers to you, Rock sir. Rock and roll. Cheers. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, so, how, first of all, how's your, how's your day gone so far today? It's been a good but busy day. I've got lots of horse things happening. We've got hay being made. It's all rock and roll at the farm. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on horses, how many horses do you actually have? I, I've actually got 17 horses, uh, but two of them are very small ponies, so they don't really count as horses. Yeah. Still 17. So um, and, um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're actually chariot ponies. Oh. Yeah. They're chariot ponies, so they train to pull a, a Celtic chariot. Oh my um, and god! Got, got stallions and mares and their performance horses, youngsters. It's um, yeah, it's a full time job. So right. you're breeding your own horses then, when you've got stallions, yeah. or they're just yeah, all right. Yeah, what kind breeding. of horses do you have? So I've got Andalusians. So Andalusians, and, right. are and then I've got a couple of um, mixed blood ones. I've got a Hungarian farm horse, two native uh, British ponies. A couple of ex polo ponies, quite a mixture. Yeah, a mixture. <laughs> oh wow! Oh my gosh! So, did you start riding at an early age? I did. I I rode my first horse uh, when I was eight years old, and I've always had horses in my life since then. So, um, I've been lucky enough to do that. But rarely if I had seventeen. I used to have had one <laughs> pony. Uh, <yeah. laughs> um, I've ended up with seventeen by a series of. Not mistakes exactly, but a series of accidents. Uh, <laughs> which, um, and, and a couple of them, quite a few of them are retired or rescue horses as well. Yeah. And I think like yeah. that's yeah. the right thing to do. You look after them until, you know, you look after them until they pass away. So, yeah. that's definitely. Right definitely. Uh, Mechanized, do you have horses? Yeah, I've, I do, yes. Uh, but they're all like, well, rescue horses, which I then rehabilitated and start riding again. Yeah, so they were in a bad shape when I got them. Let's say. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful gift to give a horse, isn't it? Because so many yeah. horses, and animals are treated badly in this world, and if you badly. can help them, it took a long I... time to get their trust back, their broken trust. But yeah. now I got it. I can, you know, they they do anything I ask. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well done, you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> also, to, um, we were backstage at one gig, and we met William Shackner, uh, Captain Kirk, <laughs> and he breeds horses as well. Yeah, trotting. Yeah. Is he? Trotters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know, I know so I did a little discussion on horses. So you didn't, you wouldn't think sitting backstage talking about horses to only shut now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure you got roll, though, surely, you know, that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he's very passionate about that, yeah. Yeah. Does he does he does he exercise and train him himself or is he kind of more But he has his own yard, so I that's how I understood. So I don't know if he still rides himself, but he's breeding them, so yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. That's oh great. God. So so to start off, uh, going back into the, um, I think it was 92, when you and your brother started off Rebellion, did you have a plan of yeah. what Rebellion was going to be and what the, the, the battle plan was? Or? No, never. No. <laughs> yes. I think, I think, uh, I think planning it. is overrated. I think the idea is you've got to just charge into uh, contact with the enemy or whatever it is or your yeah. opponents or whatever. You just got to drive down that road as fast as you can and see what happens when you get to the end. I, I reckon that's the that's the way to do it. No, but in, in all seriousness, I started the company because I kind of wanted to make computer games um, as part of my life. I enjoyed it, and it just made sense to sort of do it professionally. And then all the other stuff kind of 
happens around it. It's a bit weird. It's sort of lots of lots of people start businesses because they have a plan. Um, I started a business and then worked out right. How do we actually do this? <laughs> <laughs> how does it work? <laughs> well, what was your so, what was yeah. the what was the first computer game that Rebellion created? Well, the first one that we created was actually it was it was Aliens versus Predator for wow. um, for wow. Atari. And it's quite a funny story oh, wow. there. So we, <laughs> we put a demo together of a of a of a game involving Viking longships and dragons, which never saw the light of day. But that was our pitch. It's like our demo tape, if you like. <laughs> Uh, and then um, we took it into Atari. Now, Atari had fallen on hard times. They were in Slough. If anybody knows Slough, it's, yeah. not, it's not a particularly glamorous part of England, let's put it that way. So we went to a very unglamorous um, uh, uh, estate, uh, of sort of a business estate, and went through this massive reception area with nobody in it. And it, it had obviously been very expensive in the sort of late 70s because it had that kind of Hessian wallpaper, you know, that brown flock wallpaper everywhere um it was decorated yeah. with that but all the corners had frayed it's really brilliant it was almost <laughs> like a apocalyptic office um, and then they came, oh they came into this video, Aliens versus predator in it um yeah it was uh, on the atari jaguar for those that oh, wow. ever remember jaguar. yeah oh wow. oh wow my god that, that was such a i remember the game actually it was an awesome game and yeah we had a we, pretty much everybody that bought the atari jaguar bought that game which was fantastic um, so very, very proud of the team. I mean, it was our, it was our first, well, professional gig, really, and it it it, it went well. Because that's yeah. a, that's a that's a massive franchise um, to to be handed to you, as you say. Yeah, it's, well, it's a, weirdly, a it was a, game. Yeah, weirdly though, it was actually not really a franchise. It was a set of comics as well, but they they weren't particularly well known at that stage. And and we, we sort of we smushed the alien and the predator together in that game in a way that really kind of reflected all the movies and then you might not know this but jeremy bolt uh producer of the aliens versus predator movie was a huge fan of our game and he came to see me before he made that movie and he said can we make a game of this and we sorry can oh, we make right. a movie of this? yeah right. and, and i said it's not ours it belongs to fox so he went off to talk to fox and got the license to make a movie oh, and, oh, my oh, God. Wow. 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 So a lot of elements in that movie are based on things we did in the game, like the alien temple and that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. originally in our game. Oh, oh my god! Right. How big was your development team at that point for your first game? About, se about, about seven of us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. That was quite a lot. Because back in the day, you'd literally have two yeah. people making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Games. And so seven was a fairly big, uh, big group of people. Um, and we used stop motion animation as well. And we built we built models, we kit bashed and then photographed them. And that was in the days before um, digital photography. So if you wanted a photograph, you had to literally take it on film and yeah. you take it down to boots. <laughs> you go to boots <laughs> and you get it developed. And yeah. you'd wait for a week and then you get the pictures back. And then you could <laughs> scan them in. So we scanned them in and then tidied them up and then put them in the game. So it was very, uh, very organic process. <laughs> oh my god! And it's Pretty just gone... nowadays. It's like yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Nowadays we we, photo we do photogrammetry, which basically we take uh, eight thousand pictures of something, and then the computer will stitch it all together and get um and get the shape wow. out of it. Fantastic! Crazy. Crazy. The way it's going now is just incredible. So what what uh, what games are you currently working on? Because I know that you're. Um... Your zombie game was super awesome. I love that. <laughs> zombie Army 4. Yeah. yeah well, that, that, that was born out of um, a kind of a, an internal demo we did. We wanted to know, <laughs> see how many monsters we could run in one en one game engine. Right. And so um, the, the guys in the uh, – we've got a studio up in uh, up near Liverpool um, in Runcorn, and they bunged together a whole bunch of zombies. Mm -hmm. Now, the great thing about zombies, for those that don't know about computer games, is – artificial intelligence running routines to control the enemy is actually quite difficult. It yeah. takes up a lot of cycles. So the dumber your enemies are, <laughs> the easier the easier it is, the more you can get on screen. Yeah. And the great thing about zombies is if they do They're pretty dumb. They're really dumb. Yeah, and everybody goes, oh, great, you're simulating yeah. zombies. You're not. Yeah. just bad AI. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we, they, they, the guys put a really brilliant demo together, and we say we have to release this. And then um, we, th we wanted to th come up with a name that would make nobody uncertain what was in the game. So we actually called it Nazi Zombie Army. Right. 
Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Tick that box, tick that box, tick that box. Yeah. That's a T-shirt and a half, that is, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. And also the, yeah, so, uh, the, the Sniper Elite. Oh, Sniper Elite. Yeah, Sniper Elite series has done very, very well. So we're, um, we're working. So Sniper Elite 4 came out. We're working on Sniper Elite 5. Very exciting. So a way off yet because games are so big now. They take... Yeah. At least 200 people, about three years to make. So wow. there's a lot of work goes into every game. But um, quite I'm, exciting. I'm free, you... Yeah, have you heard Sorry. of Evil Genius? You've heard of one of our games, Evil Genius? Yeah, no, I've heard of it, yeah. I haven't. Um, there's a, it's a kind of simulating being the Bond villain. Oh, yeah. awesome. So we've got, yeah. <laughs> so we've got Evil Genius <laughs> 2 coming out uh, sometime, you know, sometime soon-ish when it's finished. Oh, so that's uh, that'll be the next one out. Yeah, yeah, I've oh, definitely got to check that out. Is that for the PC, or are you are you doing it on games consoles as well? Yeah, yeah, we we do everything on PC. We do most things on game consoles as well. So uh, so yeah, hopefully it'll be you know widely widely distributed, which is exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think of the new PlayStation Five? By the way, just as a were you on the I, video? Uh, I think we, we you, didn't you make a guest appearance on the video? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They they called it. Well, that was quite actually. That was quite that was quite funny. They called me right at the last minute to say, uh, "Could you say something about PlayStation?" I went, yeah, of course I can. And they said, "No, but it's got to be really short." I said, "How short?" They said, "About a second." I went, "What?" <laughs> about a second. How do you say something about the PlayStation in a second? They just say, uh, "Welcome to PlayStation Five," you know, and that's that's all they wanted. So. Um, we uploaded that, and we had no clue whether it was going to be used. It was, it was cut with lots of other people's work yeah. uh, as well. So, yeah. yeah, that was me. And weirdly, <laughs> that surprised a lot of people on my YouTube channel because they didn't really associate medieval. Yeah, I saw all the posts. <laughs> yeah. A few people went, what? Yeah. Is that <laughs> Where did that the imposter. He's an imposter. <laughs> so... Um, when you were running Rebellion, when did you first hear about two thousand AD, or when did uh, when did that sort of come up on your radar? I first discovered two thousand AD in the newsagent next to the chip shop that I walked past on my way back from school every yeah. day, and I saw two thousand AD with the space spinner. So it's in February nineteen seventy seven. Wow. So I bought. Of the chips, and then I bought. I can't remember which order it was. I don't know whether I bought 2000 AD and then chips, or whether it was <laughs> chips and then God. Alzheimer's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I bought, bought it then I was reading it the whole time. We wanted to make a computer game of one of the characters, John Tim Dog. Yeah, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't get the license, and I managed to track down people to speak to, and after quite a few years of negotiations, um, managed to convince them to sell it to me. So. Uh, Oh, yeah, right. in the year 2000, we concluded that deal, but we started talking about buying it probably in uh, 90, early 98. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I must admit, from my side, I was, um, from about the age of six, I was a big Marvel fan. I used to collect all the comics. And the first time I picked up a 2000 AD just blew my mind. I'd never seen art like it. I'd never read a story like it. It was just... it. I, I think virtually all 2000 AD fans have that same kind of story. The first time you ever see one, it's it's it changes your yeah. life. It's well, it's um it's subversive, isn't it? It's subversive comic telling. You know, we we don't really have superheroes in the same way. You know, we have we have interesting people in extraordinary situations or extraordinary people in extraordinary situations, but nobody's got lots of superpowers. You know, yeah. pretty much everybody's kind of tough. You know, you know, yeah. obviously, Dread is. Is super good at his job, but he doesn't really have superpowers as such. Yeah. And and quite, it's quite funny. Sometimes I'm talking to um, North American colleagues about it, and um, they go, "What's Drudge Dread's superpower?" I said, "Tight boots, <laughs> uh, day stick, <laughs> day stick, tight <laughs> trousers, <laughs> slightly moody, <laughs> yeah, a, gr a grizzled gin, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a large motorbike. Can he? Yeah, can he fly? Yes, if he's got a jet plat." You know, can, can he can he shoot monsters? Yes, if he's got a big enough gun. You know. <laughs> oh wow! So so, yeah. so so was it like a dream come true when you did manage to um, to, to to get two thousand AD? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we we kind of felt we needed to rescue it. Actually, it yeah. was it, it was languishing a little bit. It was defunded. I think the people that owned it were not as excited about it as we were, and and I think we sort of we felt we owed it. I think I, I owed it to my childhood to try to rescue it. 
yeah. and <laughs> reinvest and bring it back. And I also think comics, graphic novels, and you know that is an art form that sort of a lot of people don't really understand and, and don't appreciate. I just think the best comics are so fantastic. They really yeah. are superb. I mean, comics can be throwaway as well, knock about silly stuff, but the best comics can really take you to interesting places. No, definitely. I must admit, for me, um, the first time I read America just, oh, yeah. just blew my mind. It, that is just, that's a piece of art. It, the whole yeah, story, cool. and, and just, just, just groundbreaking. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's also interesting, again, for a lot of, um, you know, North American friends, they they often they're brought up with comics about a green bloke punching a red bloke <laughs> and a, you know, a bloke looking like a bat, sort of fighting a bloke looking like a spider, and yeah. and and that's fun, but it's also kind of quite young in a way. Well, it has young origins. Yeah. Whereas yeah. whereas two thousand eight tells story tell, tells stories about a sort of dystopia, a future dystopia that is yeah. horrible. Yeah. Uh, but it's, interesting you know the cursed earth i mean looking at the stuff you're into the the whole post-apocalyptic yeah. yeah. stuff is fantastic it's similar, you know, the cursed yeah. earth the judge red cursed earth story where he travels across the wasteland of, yeah of how awesome Maybe. i love that it's just brilliant you know yeah oh yeah very good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've, I've got i've got my, my i've got my helmet for later i've got my helmet for later yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah. on, on 2000 ad which is your favorite character I know this Ooh. is. I know. You, I know you, you would Ooh, love them all. I know you'd love them all equally, but yeah, right. So <laughs> most most recently, I have found I found the uh, Gene the Hackman Kingdom. Yeah. To be particularly, you know, it really moved me. I thought it was so well written, such an interesting character, and the kind of the alternate language that he uses, tougher yeah. and tough. You know, yeah. just. just yeah. That really works for me. Brass Sun, uh, I loved as well. That was good. There was a, there was a story called Leviathan back yeah. a few years ago. Now it yeah. was was really good. Black and white, beautiful artwork. I loved that as well. I mean, obviously, Judge Dredd is hugely influential and important as a character, but I like Mega City One. Yeah, I like the yeah. city itself. Yeah, I like the craziness, the insanity. The, the lunacy of it. And I just think I'm I'm glad it doesn't exist, but I wish it did exist because it would be interesting to visit. Well, let's and see Bob, what 2021 like, brings. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally, totally. Um, uh, just on possibly one of the best films ever made, Dread in 2012 with Carl Urban oh, and Olivia. It, it, it blew us away. We saw that on the opening night in 3D. That's probably one of the best 3D films I've ever seen, and I was just shocked on how stunning it was. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Those the slow mo. I mean, the brilliance of having oh. slow mo as a drug and and doing yeah. all of that in 3D and, that, and everything. Yeah, yeah, just, was was mesmerising. The guys, the guys did a superb job of that. It was uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Carl, Carl nailed um, uh, Judge Dredd. Dredd. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> It was great. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was there. I went to the set. I was there. Uh, I saw oh. some of it being filmed. Oh yeah. my god! Were you walking around I, on the background? Did you did you manage to get in on one of the scenes? No, I didn't. Not that one. No, no. I tried to get in the background <laughs> of many things, but no, that was because it was shot in South Africa. Yeah. Um, I could only be there for a few days, and I think they were they were setting. Oh, that was what was interesting. You know the sequence with the miniguns where they're shooting across. Yeah. Uh, yeah. from one level one to the time, other yeah. in the interior area. Yeah. Well, I was there yeah. while they were putting the explosive squibs into the set. Oh, my God. So there were a whole bunch Ooh. of really scared people putting in <laughs> hundreds yeah. and hundreds of explosive <laughs> things yeah. into the wall, wiring them all up. Oh so, uh, yeah, that was brilliant. Mm. Was it was it um, the plan because um, Carl Urban did such an amazing job because Dredd never takes his helmet off unlike the last film the film before yeah. Well, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the one we don't talk about the one we don't talk about even though it was beautiful and the ABC Warrior was amazing yeah it had its moments you know it that did. movie I mean yeah, it, did, it, did, yeah. it wasn't my it wasn't my favourite movie but it was a Judge Dredd movie it did a lot of things right yeah but it did quite a lot of things differently than I would have liked mm. yeah. yeah was in the um in the 2012 movie was it always planned that carl keeps his helmet on 
Yeah, it was written into the contract. Awesome. Oh, brilliant. Oh, hey, brilliant. Yeah. Well with, done, sir. Well there, were, there, were, there were two things written into the contract. No kissing. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Uh, Dred's face mustn't be seen. The, oh, his yeah. upper face mustn't be seen. Oh, and Carl so, was great with it. Carl, Carl agreed. He said, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't do it if my face was going to be seen. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah, he's a really good, yeah. really hardworking actor. Yeah. Now, the you know, question he's... everybody would like to know, <laughs> when is the next one happening? Is it, uh, when, well, will there be a sequel? I want there to be a sequel. It's, a, it, it's not... We've got the rights back, so we can do it. We've just got to we've got to get rid of this virus thing that's going yeah. on at the moment, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and then hopefully things can kick off in all sorts of different areas of making film and TV. It's just all it's all very messed up at the moment for, yeah. Yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is there a script yet? Yeah. Is there a so script? so there's lots working. There's lots yeah. happening. So the script yeah. is there, Mark asks. Yeah. Uh, it's a script. Um, yeah. we, uh, yes, we have a lot of work being done on all sorts oh, wow. of different scripts, actually. Yeah. So, Mega, so Mega City on the TV show, um, it's basically we can't go into production because of because um, of the COVID. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got scripts, and you know everything is ready to go. But oh, wow. but the problem is because of the pandemic and everybody's funding changes and everything shifting around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. In a few months' time, we'll I guess we'll find out. Yeah, and I, I, I guess, I guess there'll, there'll also be a, such a backlog <laughs> that, that that actually studio space is going to get become an issue, isn't it? Because yeah, but we've kind of solved three months. Yeah, you've you've solved that, haven't you? We've solved that one. Yeah, we bought a uh, set of film studios. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> as you do, you know, why not? As you do, yeah. why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we acquired two hundred fifty thousand square feet of um, former print works in Didcot. Um, oh, in right, yeah. oh, yeah. uh, and that's all it's all been stripped out and redone and so that's ready to go basically so we've got enough facilities there we've got our own vfx company uh which is uh, there as well so we're doing a whole bunch of stuff experimental stuff there and oh, um wow. yeah we're we're kind of we're ideally placed to uh, to get going with it. Oh my so, god! Yeah. There you go, Dread fans. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. There you go. Wow! So I must admit, the Mega City One TV show sounds awesome. Will that? Do you think that will be like a Netflix or an Amazon or or like a HBO? Um, well, it could be. It could be any of them, quite frankly. Uh, it could yeah. be any or all of them. Yeah, the deal isn't isn't done yet. Uh, we're in discussions with various people, but those discussions kind of paused. While yeah. everybody worked out what's going on, so we were quite a long way down the road with a couple of the sets of people. It's an expensive show, though, so yeah. it goes. Yeah. You know, it's not. Um, it's not five quid and a packet of crisps. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, no. <laughs> seventeen horses don't come cheap. No, it's a lot more than seventeen horses. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just say yeah, a well, little bit, just yeah. a bit. Uh, in, the, in the TV show, would Carl Urban and Olivia make sort of guest appearances? Do you think? Well, that way? would uh, if we if we can get people back. You know, um, uh, we even joked that it'd be quite fun to get Stallone back. You know, as yeah. A, uh, <laughs> I reckon he'd be up for us. He's, he's, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, brilliant movie. Yeah. You know? But I'd put in the contract, keep your helmet on. Oh, yes. <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> maybe we'll meet maybe we'll meet um, Stallone's judge in the cursed earth. Yeah. And he's gone on the long That, that would be and really be good. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, it, I think he'd be up for that as well, actually. Did you know that uh, yeah. George Miller uh, of Mad Max fame is a massive two thousand AD fan? I didn't. That's brilliant yeah. to hear. Yeah. yeah. I'm a massive Mad Max fan. Yeah. You see. <laughs> Awesome. So, just a quick question on Mad Max. So, which is your favourite Mad Max film, and which is your favourite character? That was a question from the feral kid himself, Emil Minty. Emil Minty. Well, it's got to be. Well, a apart from the feral kid, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> brilliant. Right. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Great boomerang. I really, I really like the first one uh, for all sorts of reasons. Because obviously, the first one is the thing that kicks off the whole world. Yeah. 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 So I like that. Um, I can't quite liked Max's sort of self-destructive urges in that. You know, he loses his wife and kids, and then basically he's more or less trying to kill himself. Well, he is trying yeah. to kill himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
about that. That's his motivation. He actually doesn't want to live anymore. Want to live, yeah. He's just hoping somebody takes him out. Um, so I'm, I have a, I have a soft spot for that movie because it was so well done on such a low budget. Yeah. You know, <laughs> really? I, love, I love seeing success on low budgets. It's brilliant. Yeah. But then Thunderdome, you know, um, Master Blaster, I really yeah. like mm. as well. Um, I, I, Captain Walker, the cat, the Captain Walker character, I've always appealed to me, and those kids, you know, yeah. the uh, the wild kids yeah. were, were just yeah, they were. so. To be honest, um, I don't really. They're all so brilliant. Yeah, they really are. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, that's an all, all, all slightly different. Well, it's a progression, yeah. isn't it? Through the years, yeah. I, yeah. I see yeah. that. You know, it's getting. You know, it's progressing. I quite like Iron Bar. I just like I like Iron Bar because he's short and he's trying to be tall. Yeah. That's that's Angry Anderson, and he's coming on in a couple yeah. of weeks' time. So if you do have a question, <laughs> if you have a question yeah. for Mister Angry Anderson, uh, we will yeah. ask him. And and then I have to say, you know, um, the 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 auntie entity was just uh, yeah. You know, Tina was, was she, oh, she nailed it, didn't amazing. he? That yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then her yeah, Iron Bar. <laughs> yeah, do that. It's just so cool and fantastic. Um, Thank you, man. Yeah. At some point, we're gonna we're gonna have to make you some uh, post-apocalyptic uh, horse armor for you and your horse. That's because I love that. that's actually that's one of uh, I've got a few personal projects, and the idea of how to post-apocalyptic up a knight or the equivalent, you know, yeah. and, and using horse yeah. power in the apocalypse, I always think oh. would be really interesting to do. Um, you know. I, yeah, I'd, oh. that'd be a brilliant project. To I, do. I think we'd have to team up on that. We can definitely, yeah. definitely go for that. I, yeah. I, I have a question from uh, Mark Sexton, who's a 2000 AD artist. He's also doing the oh, story. Right. He's doing the storyboarding yeah. for Thor, the new Thor film. So he's he's busy scribbling. Uh, he wants his check. <laughs> no, he says um, he's a massive um, 2000 AD fan. Is there any chance of you doing any games, any more computer games of, related to either, you know, Dread or? or yes, anything? there is, basically. Yeah, we, 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 have never, we have never said we won't do any more. We just absolutely chock-a-block with Sniper Elite, yeah. Evil Genius, Zombie Army. I've got, uh, believe it or not, I've got 400 people work for me. Oh my oh, gosh! Wow. From seven yeah. to four hundred. Wow! I've got four hundred members of staff, highly talented, wow. incredibly creative, technical individuals, all working hard on the games. But we need more people. We we, we just can't do all the games we want to do. It's just yeah. you know, games are so massive these days. I mean, arguably, the games industry is bigger than the movie industry. It's, yeah. You know, we, we yeah, can yeah, help yeah. Them around the world, and and I just we just can't find enough people to do all the games we want to do. Oh so God. we have to pick and choose. So yeah. for the moment, it's Sniper Elite, Zombie Army, and Evil Genius. So. Are you going into the 3D gaming as well? Because through the, you know, with the lockdown, I got this headset, and I love this <laughs> gaming. It's just we, like... We yeah, 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 we did. We we, we did Battlezone. Remember Battlezone? Oh, right. yeah. 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 We did an updated 3D, you know, uh, an updated VR version of that uh, for Sony's uh, platform. For the Sony wow. headset, oh did really God. well. So it was a launch title. Oh, could you imagine in VR a direct game? Oh my yeah. gosh! It's or like... even Road Trooper would just be stunning. Yeah. yeah, Road Trooper, and of course we got Duncan's um, Duncan yeah. Jones's movie that's you know paused at the moment. That's and gonna... he's over in Canada. Yeah, where that's going to be they... brilliant. Where about are they going to film that? Hopefully, it did cop. That's oh. the idea. Oh, We're filming awesome. in our studios. Yeah, because it'll all be done. We'll do a lot of virtual production as well. Lots of green screen and blue screen and virtual production like they did on the Mandalorian. We've got all that kind of kit. Yeah. So we'll be doing a lot of that kind of stuff once, uh, once the rules change for what you can actually do in production. And Duncan, um, Duncan's, uh, Duncan and Stuart, uh, uh, great friends of mine. And we're always talking about all the things we can do. And the great thing about them is they're both super Uber 2000 AD fans. So <laughs> Duncan's a bit like me. He's kind of, he feels like he's the guardian of the, of the characters. So yeah. he wants to do the best. <laughs> Can. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Script, script's really good. Oh, so excited. So excited. <laughs> I've got, got, got a request from the chat room saying, can you somehow manage to get uh, Max Headroom into the back of Mega City? Max Headroom? Yeah. I well, love uh, Max Headroom. 
Yeah, m- 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 Max. Um, uh, <laughs> he's uh, um, well, he's somebody else's intellectual property, so yeah, we have to yeah, be a bit yeah. careful. Which is why we have to, could, you know. That, I mean, that that is such a mess, isn't it? I mean, that that battle. That's why we haven't had anything. What the uh, mad? Yeah, the, the, the yeah. Happy. It's just yeah. It's a shocking, well, shocking waste. It is really, but you have to be. You have to understand. You know, sometimes uh, ownership of these things can get really tricky and complicated, yeah. and yeah, um, yeah it, the, rights need to be protected. You know, because yeah, people totally. that make, absolutely, uh, yeah, living. yeah. So, but 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 um, to the extent of having nothing. I mean, you had the Matt Frewer f- short film, which was genius. Yeah, um, and and then no, no other live action at all, apart from the MTV shows, that sort of thing. It just yeah, just yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, such a waste. I mean, it's just sort of yeah. sitting there doing like a roll. So, uh, yeah. just a quick question on your: What is your film uh, company called? Is it Rebellion? Film, film company. Yeah, your... Rebellion Productions. Re- yeah, Rebellion, Rebellion Productions. Production. Yeah, Re- Rebellion Productions. Yeah. Because everything nowadays is Amazon, Netflix. It's all looking for new content, etc. So, are you as well as is doing your own stuff? Are you going to be doing stuff for these people? You know? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but we're tough negotiators, so we, you know, we don't go down without a fight. We, uh, we, we, we don't let <laughs> people talk us down. Um, I've walked away from big deals because I didn't think that the people understood what we were trying to achieve. Yeah. yeah. With the yeah. And we're in, we're in a, uh, a, a great place in that we don't need to do deals. We want to do deals. We want to work with the right creative people, yeah. the right teams, yeah. the right story. You know, it's really important to get these things right as we possibly can. You know, you don't always make a brilliant thing, but we, you've always got to try. And so, you know, Hollywood's got lots of money and they're used to shoving people around. And I think um, they're not used to people saying, no, we don't want to do a deal like that. So yeah. you know, we're, 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 getting there. we're getting there. People understand that we're, we're really precious and careful about how we handle the characters that we're the guardians of, yeah. as we should be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. the do you think it helps being on this side of the pond sometimes? uh yeah it does it does i mean the thing is 2000 of these red on the east and west coast and in texas in the big metropolitan areas in the in the the u.s a lot it's very well known it's less well known in the middle areas of of, of america not compared to marvel and dc so, but so um, the rest of the world well yeah yeah <laughs> it goes to australia new zealand lots of places yeah, yeah. um we actually have quite a lot of fans in scandinavia as well and surprisingly perhaps in india there are a lot of 2008 oh, fans wow. in India. It's really interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think novels are massive in in the, in the subcontinent. Yes, so they are. Yeah, very, yeah. yeah. It, it, is, yeah. is the whole digital format taking off more now than printed? Uh, yeah, that's going really well. That's kind of fun for uh, readers in places that are a long way away because yeah. shipping shipping comics by boat meant that they were kind of reading it in lumps of a month or three months or whatever. Yeah, that's it. So now, now they can get digital and physical later for their collection. We've got a lot of people that read it yeah. digitally and, then, and collect. Um, so the the, the community is really good and really you know yeah, everybody can read it at the same time without getting spoilers. So yeah, digital's done very very well for us. Subscriptions are up, digital sales are up. Everything's going really well, which is which is wonderful. Oh, That's good news. Yeah. yeah. Will, will there ever be like another big, uh, like a, a dread con or you know a worldwide dread festival or a 2018? No reason why. No reason why not. You know, I guess when there's a vaccine, you know, maybe yeah. you know, yeah. maybe, oh. maybe dread can take a vaccine across the across the cursed earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we are definitely yeah, a cursed well, earth at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're all wearing masks for real. You know? oh, totally. Exactly. totally. So, um, do, as well as um, with 2000 AD, etc., um, going back to your your modern history TV show on YouTube, <laughs> I, which I absolutely love, I never knew all these facts, and it's absolutely stunning. So, could you just explain to the audience what your TV, modern history TV is? <laughs> Um, well, I I have things like swords. Um, uh, this is a real this is a real sword. Uh, it's sharp as well. This is actually a Norman uh, Norman knight sword. Um, I I really wanted to have a go at doing the YouTube stuff. So one of my areas of passion is horses and the medieval period and knights in armor and that kind of stuff. And I thought it'd be really fun to do a YouTube channel. It's called Modern History. It's a weird reason around that name, anyway. <laughs> It's not modern history, it's medieval history, but anyway. Um, 
<laughs> so I just decided to have a go, and um, we, we put, put a team together. Uh, they did the first sort of season of that, and now it's just me and my partner Cass uh, and the horses um, making these uh, making these shows. And we try we talk about all sorts of aspects of the medieval world. So I'm less interested in kings and wars than I am in how people live their lives and how they brushed their teeth and what yeah. they wore yes. and how they went to work. Yeah. And whether having a horse in medieval times was actually more efficient or whether it's a status symbol and how to use a sword from horseback or an axe from yeah. horseback. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. God, yeah. And, and of course, as, a, as horse owners, well, I can try that. So I've got horses that I can try it out on. So, <laughs> so, so I sometimes ask a question and then test it out on camera and yeah. see whether it makes sense. So, so, uh, so yeah, it's you... been a brilliant success. You do in the night riding as well, isn't it? Jousting. So when did you start with that? So how yeah. how did you get the idea to go on a horse and do this jousting? Well, I, yeah, I was always interested in knights in armor, and I had horses since I was eight years old. Very lucky to have ponies, um, and I never really combined the two. I I did the what's called pony club and stuff in in England, where you know, yeah. 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 girls and their actually, and a few boys and ponies. Um, uh, and I was fascinated by knights in armor. I went to an event run by English Heritage where I saw some people in armor on horses and thought, ah, I can combine these two things. <laughs> and so I went along to the training over the winter, learned how to do it, bought my first set of armor, and um, got lucky enough to actually joust for real in public um, very, very quickly. I was I was quite a good rider compared to, I had a lot more riding experience than a lot of the people that mm. went, that were, were doing it. So I was, I was right up there at the top with the riding. Obviously I didn't know about the jousting or wearing armor or anything. Um, and just had a go at that and uh, enjoyed it very much. Oh. And then so, I even went. Sorry. It's for sure heavy, isn't it? So how do you get on and how, how you staying on and, and yeah. steering the horse? Well, you, you can get on and off a horse in armor it takes quite a lot of effort though um and the armor is heavy it's about about a third my body weight uh wow. but the helmets are the, the helmets are the heaviest and they restrict your vision so when you've got a jousting helmet on you have to remember the the jousting i do is real sport real jousting real sport jousting so you are you are really trying to hit the other person you and you yeah. can't hit them you hit them hard yeah. and you either hit or you miss you know it's not you, yeah, it's like basically throwing punches and you either miss somebody or you hit them really hard in the face. You know, <laughs> and, 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 so what, what, what's, what's the closing speed? Well, each person is probably doing 20, 25 miles. Yeah, they're doing a, a so fast canter. 50 mile an hour then? 20 miles an hour, 40 miles yep. an hour. Yeah, 40 mile an hour yeah. closing speed. So you've been wow. hit by a, by a bloody fence post at 40 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> off. Exactly, yeah, yeah but, but you've got <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know. it, it glances and it breaks. I mean, the lances are designed to that they they shouldn't they shouldn't they shouldn't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, you're, they you're maybe I should try it. <laughs> uh, they, they did historically kill people, but it's usually an accident. It usually goes in the eye slot yeah. uh, because, of course, you have yeah. a very narrow eye slot, but splinters of wood can go yeah. through that. And uh, we have had accidents in the modern era of people tragically losing their lives to doing it, but. Um, it's very, very rare, um, but you need to do a lot of training. It's like um, it's like any any dangerous sport. You, you would be crazy just to sort of get on a horse and have a go yeah, because yeah. you really hurt yourself badly. Yeah. And also, you've got to look after the horse as well. Yeah, you've really got to look after the horse. Yeah, totally. And you've got to wear armor. I had horse armor and all that kind of stuff. So it all, it all costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time to get organized as well yeah, do you, yeah, do you yeah. remember the first time you were you were jousting and actually got hit uh, by the opponent because i've heard that you sort of never forget that the first time <laughs> well yeah. sometimes when, when you when you're on a particular horse uh, there's a, there's a, you stand and you you basically you've got your visor down and you can sort of see about that much. Um, you can't see down. You can't see a horse. You're riding without seeing your hand or without seeing the horse. You can see a bit of your lance. So you see a lance in front of your hand like this. Um, and then you salute to the other person. They salute, ready to go. And then you both go. Now, if you don't lean forward when the horse goes... <laughs> You're off. You... You're off. <laughs> You're off. So, so, so sometimes your vision of the joust is... 
Uh, you can see the enemy. You can see the enemy. Sky, 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 sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can sing. You've missed them completely. They've just ridden past you because you just. <laughs> <switched them out. laughs> you can see it. But you have to lean forward a bit to brace yourself. Yeah. It's um, it's wonderful, absolutely brilliant. But <laughs> it takes up so much energy that yeah. um, you can't. I can't really think about the other person's lance. I can yeah. only think of what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. You hold it. Yeah. It's second. Yeah. Can, if they hit me, it's, uh, you know, can you it, see, it's fine. Can, do you know that you're going to be just about to be hit? Or is it a bit of a surprise to you? Because all you can see is through the, the slit what you're trying to do. Well, you have you have light hits, which, you know, if it glances off or yeah. it doesn't hit you, so on. Um, and then you have really heavy hits. But sometimes it's a bit weird. You think you've hit. But they've hit you and you've missed them. But it feels like you've missed them. Yeah. And it's only ah, a... okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, it's kind of it's weird. It's a weird thing to describe. But basically, you don't know till you get to the end whether you've won or lost. Actually, oh. and it, as the as one of the riders, as one of the knights, the two knights, the people with the worst view of the joust in the whole <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, yeah. 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 they do the it. <laughs> you can't see it. But basically, yeah. as soon as you hit, you lean back slightly, and the slot closes yeah so you can't, you can't see course. yeah yeah so literally yeah. you can't see anything so you you're you're dead on you think <laughs> right oh what happened there then and, and you're, you're moved away and you can't see anything and it happens in it happens in a split second so you haven't got a chance you you brace and yeah. you, you basically what i do is i brace and wait you, see brace, it. you wait bam, and yeah, you boom Oh my god! Yeah. Well, we could do that in the post-apocalyptic, couldn't you? You could have motorbikes and stuff like that, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thoroughly encourage you to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, well, but well, I think you give it a go first. <laughs> mechanized, <laughs> has, yeah. mechanized has fought in the Thunderdome twice. And won. Uh -huh. And won. She did yeah. that. Yeah, a full-size Thunderdome. Would you ever have a go at that, Jason? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It's so amazing. <laughs> I can tell you the <laughs> adrenaline. <laughs> Can I bring my own weapon? You can bring uh, anything, but no, it's like they, they no, pull no, you back. No, 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 you can't no, bring his own weapon. <laughs> yes, you can if they're soft weapons, not like real weapons. You no. can bring soft okay. weapons. I think Jason's a real metal. To. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. they're all metal and sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd, be than, I'd be more than happy. I'd love to have a go. I love, I love tournaments, and that would be a different kind of tournament, but also the same. Because yeah. medieval tournaments were all about showing off and entertaining people as well. Yeah. I tell you, it's hard going. I underestimated yeah, it. Yeah. So they, they, they throw you back and then you have to go in and then you have the hundreds of people shouting down on you to fire you up and you have to give it. It's hard. Brilliant. <laughs> I, would, I would absolutely love to do that. That would be brilliant. So you have to come with yeah. us to Waste Sunday weekend? Yes. <laughs> yeah. we, we will have to take over. So we, we headline a, a big festival over in America called Wasteland Weekend, which is the biggest post-apocalyptic festival in, in the world over in L.A., and we've done that for yeah. the last four years running. And then next year, we're doing, uh, we're over to Australia, which we'd love to invite you to come with us, to the Mad Max uh, Mad Max 2 40-year anniversary big festival with all the actors and stuff. So if you are around and if you are free uh, through your yeah, very you're busy very schedule, you're, you're all, <laughs> always welcome. Australia is a wonderful place. I mean, I, I've got some good Australian friends that... Uh, that, that joust as well. Um, I've got some just jousting friends over there, and uh, yeah, they're they're a good bunch, and it's a fantastic country. Oh, yeah, yeah, very big, so, yeah. very very yeah. big. Yeah. Wow. Uh, do, do yeah, currently, they're building everything up. So there's the Mad Max Museum. So it's a guy from England went over to open the Mad Max Museum, and they have all the original parts, and they're really really passionate about it. So everything Wonderful. is like it would be amazing. Uh, Emil yeah, Mint, look, Emil Mint. That's brilliant. Emil Minty's actually got a um, interceptor car, so he's built one. Uh, so you've got you've got the feral kid in a in an interceptor. Also, Bruce Spence lives down the road, so he's hopefully coming as well. Who is a gyro wow. captain? It's just it's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so, brilliant scene that where he where he backs away where Max. Max has got the machete, hasn't he? Under, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's got, uh, yeah, I love that. And he goes. A smart man who could beat a snake, you know, <laughs> you might have a weapon under there. <laughs> <That's> a <great laughs> Brilliant, lovely. It's, we, 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 we've got a lot of interest in the uh, chat room for um, shopping trolley jousting at the moment. Shopping trolley jousting. Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to make sure with jousting there, you've got to go in a straight line. So you have to fix the wheels of the shopping oh, trolley. Oh, yeah. 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 
And don't really forget important. the pound coin as well. <laughs> yeah, pound yeah. coin. Um, now, you... me being German, okay, okay there's, there's something now in the chat room, and me being German, this just went over my head, so maybe someone can explain. Problem in Australian jousting is horses are upside down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, like that's it. just not, uh, yeah, it's no, just not, not funny. funny okay. <laughs> Aaron, you're an idiot. <laughs> okay. um, so, Jason, a quick question. So, as well as your swords, do you collect medieval... Have you got any other medieval stuff? You mean actual medieval stuff? Yeah, like, or, well, or, 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 you know, weapons and, yeah. Well, I've got a few behind me. I've got various swords here. I've got various axes. I've got a, um, I, I brought this along because I thought this would amuse you. So this is a, wow. um, this is a, a basically a, a Norman helmet, it's slightly later than Battle of Hastings. So probably around 1100, 1120. So this is a, it's got a face mask. So they, they realise that they're all getting hit in the face by lances, probably from the other people or arrows. So they start to put face masks on. Trouble is, it, it does that into your face. Yeah. You, you, you don't have any yeah. padding on the inside, so you get your face smashed in. But um, you, you know, the, these are actually reasonably comfortable. But um, and you can't really see too much. Well, you can't see me. But you can't no. <laughs> yeah. They, they, um, yeah, it works. It works quite well. Was, but you, but it's really, really echoey. Yeah. You can't hear much. Yeah. <laughs> was there was there a reason why it had a flat top? Um, basically, I think that's because that's all they worked out how to make at that <laughs> stage, and it's it, it's fairly straightforward. One of the problems was steel was very expensive. Yeah. Uh, and this is basically the at a fairly small amount of steel. I mean, it, it's a it's the development from the Spangenhelm, which they had, which is the conical helms with a nasal. Um, uh, and I'm, to be honest, I don't know that anybody really knows why they went for the flat top. Um, I, I think it might have been fashion. Let's face it, fashion plays a part in, yeah. in, uh, in armour. Um, uh, the trouble is it doesn't deflect blows very well. No. Uh, so if you've got to hit straight down there, you're hitting onto a flat piece of steel. And ideally, you want your armour to be glancing. Yeah. You yeah. know, the same as the construction of the front of a tank. You want it to be at an angle. Yeah. So if you hit somebody on the head. So I personally think that there wasn't that much uh, horse to horse combat at this stage because otherwise you could get an axe in the head. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was more yeah, more to do with ground cavalry ground to fighting. ground. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, that's uh, that's quite fun to, to ride in as well. It's all padded on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Except you haven't got a clue where, which direction you're going. <laughs> well, the problem is looking down. When you're on a horse, you're about eight eight foot yeah. in the yeah. air, and you're used to when you anybody that rides, you're kind of used to knowing you can move your head around. Yeah, just glance, uh, yeah. And but when you've got a helmet on and it stops your vision downwards, you have to be really careful about treading on people who are on the ground on foot. Jason, I now know why there's a flat bit on the helmet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rodin, Rodin just gave us the news uh, on it. Okay. It's to, yeah, you rest the mug of meat on it. Uh, so whenever... <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, so you can just, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, That's where the idea of a, of a knight's crest came from. They actually <laughs> realized. <laughs> ah, yeah. So, from, did you have a go in your modern history? Well, I, I actually saw the show, so I know you did. But how did you find? <laughs> how did you find the long bow? Oh, well, I tell you what, Luke, the, the chap that came down to demonstrate it, Luke is a, Luke's one of those, he's, he's an absolutely brilliant bloke. Um, he he doesn't look that tall when he's far away until he gets close to you. And he's kind of, it's like that trick they did with Gandalf and Frodo in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he, he, he's actually really big, yeah. but he's far away. Yeah. Um, yeah. As he gets closer to you, he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and, and, and he's, you know, he's about six foot six. And really well built, and he he has been drawing longbows uh, since the age of eight, which is roughly the same age that I started riding horses. So, so he has been pulling longbows for the right length of time for medieval longbowmen, and I've been riding horses right for the right time, time for medieval yeah. knights. So we made yeah. quite a good sort of partnership yeah. there. Um, and uh, he he pulled a hundred and sixty pound warbow comfortably. And he gave it to me, and I, I tried to move it, and I thought, that's pathetic. He said, well, it is 160 pounds. That's quite a lot of weight to move. Yeah, um, yeah. And then he gave, me, he gave me his children's bow. He called it his children's <laughs> bow, and it was 70 pounds raw weight, which anybody that knows how, 
how much that takes to draw yeah. it was very, very difficult. That takes a lot to, and it's a technique as well. It's, yeah. yeah. But but yeah, we managed it. We managed it. And his but the arrows he used were really big as well. They're like orc <laughs> arrows. They're really big. They're not skinny little things. They're big chunks of wood. And I just think that's just being on the receiving end of one of those would just be hell. Yeah. Oh that's my god. Good. What was the yeah. most interesting fact you learned from your modern history shows? Do you know what? There are lots of them. Uh, I really like the one on tally sticks, which is the way you um, you would prove you paid your taxes. They would you'd carve notches into a stick, so and then it would be split down the middle lengthways, and each side would have a yeah. stick with the same notches carved on it, and you could present that and say, "No, Mister Taxman, I have paid my tax. <laughs> it matches the receipt." And that's where we get the stock and the foil. So the stock is the long piece, which the tax man would keep. Yeah. And the foil is what you get. And that's still used in banking today. We get stock market because they could be traded. So oh, the, the stocks they're talking about are not shares. They're actually carved bits of wood. Um, and um, and the, the fact that they burned down the Houses of Parliament as well. <laughs> because they had all of these. So in 1860, something, 1865, they had a whole bunch of all these medieval tally sticks in vast numbers. And the, there were a bunch of builders told to get rid of them. And they were told to burn them. They burned them. So they chucked them in a, in a, a stove, it was called. Uh, but it, there were so many of them, and they were so dry, they burned so hot, they set the chimney on fire, and they burned down the medieval Houses of Parliament. Do you, do you have these films addresses by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it, was, it was tragic because, of course, there were probably tax receipts from the yeah. ransoming of yeah. Richard, King yeah. Richard the Lionheart there as well. So there were all this history. Uh, and the Houses of Parliament that we see today were obviously built after that. Yeah. Oh, God, so God. the original Houses of Parliament was the Palace of Westminster. It was a medieval palace. It was burned yeah. to the ground. And that's why we have the kind of victorian thing the 1870s yeah, the, 1880s yeah. one now yeah yeah yeah. So the Gothic, Beautiful. yeah because that was a replacement replacement to the ones that burnt down because of tally sticks oh my god <laughs> oh wow see, see, t taxes you see bad bad yeah, yeah. i also yeah. i also like medieval toothpaste you like that one as well yeah that was, twig. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And because uh, I, I tried that in cloves, really interesting. Cloves were obviously, met, people in medieval times had cloves. They were quite expensive, but it doesn't take much of a clove. So you grind it up with some salt yeah. and you can use that as toothpaste. And I tried oh, it. Oh, 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 it, did. it actually works really well. It's actually really nice. Could, could, it. Does it? I, oh. could, they, <laughs> could, there, could there be a rebellion toothpaste brand coming up in the near future? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that might be a that might be an industry too far for us. We've got, we've got games, books, comics, you know, films, TV, uh, modern history, YouTube yeah. channel. Wow. I reckon toothpaste. No, maybe. Yeah. not really. <laughs> a big business, but yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I must admit, everybody, uh, I'd just like to say how proud everybody is of uh, from the UK of you uh, and of Rebellion. You know, you, you are a yeah. national treasure. Uh, and well, that's really you, you, <laughs> Yeah, no, but you are. You, 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 you're doing us all proud. And, and we, we, you know, massive fans of the comics and the games and, and everything. Well, thank you. We'll keep keep reading them. We'll keep making it. You know, that's, yeah. uh, that's the secret. Awesome. So what? what, now, what... Paul Johnson oh, just asked a question. So he he said, "Will Rebellion be making any appearances on the co uh, Comic Cons in the near future? Given that there's a growing Judge Dread patrols going on, so you have a lot of um, Dread going." We, well, yeah, we almost always go to lots of we go to lots of conventions. The team goes to all sorts of Comic Cons and stuff. But uh, I guess. You know, when we can start going back and having meetings yeah. and you know mm -hmm. events and things, we'll be there when when we're allowed to. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we we like supporting them, and it's uh, we go to the San Diego Comic Cons, we go to lots of different ones as well. We used to go to can you get um, me a ticket? UK ones. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Can you get me a ticket? San Diego. <laughs> <I'm going there. laughs> um, just just a quick question back to the Mega City uh, One TV show. Will it have the same sort of um, Judge Dread uniforms as the 2012 film, or are you going to go in a different direction and redesign yeah. them? Or 
Yeah, well, probably. Well, those obviously were based on the comic book, and the comic book Judge Dredd's outfit. You know, his uniform has been designed in so many different ways. So, yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. we'll probably. I don't. Well, we haven't made a decision yet. Yeah, basically, mm. I doubt yeah. it'll be. It won't be exactly the same. Um, it'll be, you know, similar. It's got to be practical. You know, we've yeah. got to. We've got to, we've got to make uni- the uniforms and all the, the equipment. Basically, it's it's protective safety equipment for mili- militarized police force. Basically, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's got to do the job, and actors have got to be able to act in it and perform and stunts and everything. The great thing is for stuntman, it can be actually protected. So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Hidden protection. They can wear real protection. Properly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I definitely. I thought the um, the uh, the dread film though was the armor and everything. And the design was so spot on because it was practical. It looked, yeah. it looked all believable. It's yeah. it's yeah. proper. You know, motorbike stuff, leathers. You know, the bike. Yeah. Everything was... I, I also, yeah. I I like the idea because I I love cosplay and I love you know dressing up and all that kind of. I I really think it's fun to do and you learn a lot about doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, I like practical costumes as well. I like costumes that you can actually do stuff. Yeah, in. you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working on some kind of Lord of the Rings style costumes that I can ride horses in and fight in, and that that's really important. I always think the that the dread costumes they've got to allow that. You've got to be able to perform in them. You've got to be able mm. to do yeah. physical activities, yeah. and they've also got to look cool too because they've got to be intimidating. And, well, uh, I went as a German judge and got told off because I was not screen accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it also said "f off." I'm German on the side yeah. of the helmet. It, it, it is funny. So initially, when the 2012 film came out, there was we all we all go to comic cons. So we all dress as judges and we raise money for the Dogs Trust. So that's uh, really? one of the things we, we we love doing for rescue dogs. But initially, when the film first came out, it all had to be screen accurate. And whereas now, I've got a like a, a riot judge. And I've made my own version. Yeah. People just do like mashups of like Alien or Predator yeah, judges. And judge, yeah. it, it's yeah. just fun. It's but everybody loves Judge Dredd. It, it's such a it's such a, a fun, um, inclusive sort of comic that everybody all around. Yeah, well, I also love the fact that you can be, you know, men, women, any ethnicity, you can be a judge, you know, because they had all sorts of different types of judges, you know, yeah. in the comic yeah. book. Yeah. You have all sorts, you know, we have side judges, tech judges, you know, we've even got, you know, exorcist judges, a very <laughs> small department, but yeah. you know, they, they do it, you know. And the great thing is you can play with it because Mega City One, the world of Judge Red is such an expansive place. You know, Brit City judges. Yeah. You know, Brit there's, there's all of yeah. that. Uh, yeah. in Powhab and, you know, Sino sit. There's all sorts of fantastic places oh that um, that you can explore. And of course, the uniforms will change as the story evolves as well. You know, the the Dred's initial uniform in the very yeah. first story is very different to how it's drawn now. Yeah. And you even have things like the Holocaust Squad. Yeah. So I always like the oh, idea yeah. that you know judges are not allowed to drink or smoke. Obviously, it's all highly illegal yeah. unless you're in the Holocaust yeah. Squad. <laughs> Because oh, I would like to be in that one then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because basically, they're suicide judges. Yeah. They, they're the ones, they, they parachute in to active volcanoes to do something and then die. So they give oh, no, I don't want to be <laughs> They're fantastic. You know? I don't want to die yet. But I think, yeah. I think it's, so, but, it's so good for Rebellion because you've got all all the creative people under one house so you've got the games and the the comics and the graphic oh, yes. novels yeah. that you can sort of lean on each other if you want to do yeah. a new project yeah and we've got yeah. we've got people who are comics artists who can come and help to work on the games and games people who can oh. help inform the comic and books right. you know writers and and all those kind of things it works really nicely together i think it's um it's really nice to work in a creative studio like that but i was oh, also going to say don't forget you've got Judges that go on the long walk. Yeah. You've got um, Cursed Earth Coburn. So one of my favourite characters, who you mentioned this before, and I'd forgotten him, but Cursed Earth Coburn. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love him. He's the exact opposite of Judge Dredd. You know, he's a he's a lawman, but he takes it, a, you know, he swigs whiskey, he smokes and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he, he's just a, a bit of a layabout too. You know, <laughs> I just <laughs> yeah. love that. Totally. Would you, right. would you in the TV show, would you do one of the characters? Because you're Me? used to acting, oh. yeah, and you're used to, you know, you've got your YouTube channel and you're very good in front of the camera. I don't know, maybe, yeah. I, I, pro- I try, I try to get little cameos in the things that we do. Yeah. I, I mentioned to you, earlier, 
we just finished um, we finished post production on a post apocalyptic movie called Schools Out Forever, which hasn't been released yet. Um, we've got to work out how we get it released, but it's a it's based on one of our abandoned books series about uh, basically a, a boys' school just after the apocalypse happens. There's a there's a disease sweeps the earth and it kills ninety nine percent of people in about six days. So oh, our main oh, character. He gets actually the story starts with him. I don't think this is a spoiler, but basically he gets expelled from school, and as he's going uh, home, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he gets expelled from school. And as he's going home, the apocalypse happens. Oh wow! And then he gets right. home, and as he gets home, he gets home, and there's nobody there, so he has to go back to school. Oh my god! Oh, that's and then, and then chaos happens. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Oh wow! Was that, where, was, where was that filmed? That was filmed on location in Didcot. It was filmed down in a school, I don't remember where it was, in Kent, I think, uh, and then a school in London uh, as well for the main area. So it's filmed on location. Really tight budget, but really great performances from everybody. It's quite dark, though, because it's a bit Lords of the Fly. Kind yeah. of. Oh, wow. it all yeah. Yeah. Who directed but, that? Yeah, sorry? Who directed that? Uh, oh, uh, Ollie. can't remember his last name. Oh, no. What's his last name? It'll come uh, Ollie and Emma made it. I know them. I know their first names. So yeah. uh, yeah. Oliver. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Ollie. That's really <laughs> rubbish of me. Um, but uh, it, we we fully funded it as well, so we made it ourselves, wow. and wow. Um, wow. that's exciting. We didn't use anybody else's money for it. Yeah. But you were asking about me being involved. Well, I said, "Can I get me and my one of my horses in it?" And they went, "There aren't any horses in the script." And then, <laughs> 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 Could there be? Could there Could be? Just make it happen. <laughs> well, I twisted. Obviously, you know, I I had the power, so I twisted somebody's um, uh, somebody's Ten. arm, and they said, "Yeah, you can be in the background." So there's a there's a scene around the school gates where I'm outside as a member of the militia. So um, uh, yeah, so that was kind of fun. Um, what's his name? Ollie Milburn. Oliver Ollie Milburn. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. From... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it's Emma Biggins. Um, Emma Biggins. Thank you. Yep. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm in the back, I'm in the background on one of my horses called Warlord. Oh wow. Um, but, oh wow. But, but also one of the themes because I was we you know we were talking about costumes and and outfits and that yeah. kind of stuff. Well, one of the things that, that we had a lot of fun with was we didn't want to go as far as Mad Max kind of does with costumes and yeah. things. Cause this was, this is literally a week or month after the apocalypse. So people, are, but people are starting to go a, a bit, bit funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think found out this year. Yeah. And we thought, what about Morris dance? Awesome. Morris dance is a really good <laughs> I love Morris dancing. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have a whole post-apocalyptic Morris dancer thing oh, going. Awesome! So, so I had a I had a top hat on, yeah, and I had the ribbon. <laughs> I had the top hat and ribbon, oh, uh, and I'm on a horse, and we're surrounded by people with shotguns and all sorts of stuff. So, y if you look closely, you'll see me in one scene outside the school gates, going back to the boys on a horse. Um, so it's nice to do that. It's a little Easter egg for people. Yeah, and um, and we filmed a video about Ooh. that for Modern History as well. So, um, so we'll release that at the same time when, when we know what we're doing with the movie. But it was really fun to do and nice to get into early post apocalyptic, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just I love the sort of, yeah. The extreme stuff is great. I also quite like the idea of what if you know, if you were a schoolboy with a uniform, how does that translate to a year after the apocalypse? Yeah. Do you still wear your blazer and your school tie? Yeah. What else do you do? But Road and Ask, have you got? But like, is there like a, a preview of it? A clip you can share? It, or... we, we finished it. We finished it. We were, the plan was to do the um, festival circuit. We were going to release it on festi to festivals. Yeah. But um, there's a possibility. I think there's a London Film Festival coming up. Uh, it's going to be virtual. Uh, mm -hmm. I think later mm -hmm. on this year, we might, if we're lucky, I think we've entered it for that. So if we're lucky, that'll be the first time it gets seen. Okay. Uh, it's great oh really my, nice oh my gosh so over the years so what is your most biggest moment you you look back on think like yeah you know Big, like something out, yeah you know wow. your... do you know what i'm incredibly lucky there's lots of moments like that you know but um, there's always one like with us there's always one way to think like 
Yeah, I, I, people ask me, uh, who's your hero? I say, I have so many people I a admire. Heroes is hard, yeah. Yeah. Um, one moment. No, I, I, I honestly couldn't give you one moment. Um, uh, I suppose wearing armor for the first time, real medieval armor for the first mm. time, wow. the helmet on, closing, closing the visor. Actually, to be fair, there was this pretty special moment jousting at the Tower of London. Oh, the wow. Place. Yeah. That, that Henry VIII yeah. jousted. So I've jousted just like Henry VIII there. Oh my God. And, and it was in historically accurate, well, not quite Tudor, but it was late medieval, early Tudor stuff. So theoretically, everything I was seeing through the visor of my helmet yeah. Yeah. was what he was seen. Exactly what Henry VIII saw when he was Whoa. jousting there as well. Oh so I, I like that idea of time travel in your mind. So there yeah. are moments like that. That, are, that that stick in the in the mind. Would, would there's you, a moment. Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, no, go on, Carol. Sorry. There's a moment where it was pouring with rain in one joust, and I learned a new technique how to get rid of raindrops from your visor before you go yeah. down. So, <laughs> if you ever need to joust in the rain, here's a tip from somebody that's actually jousted in the pouring rain. So, what you do is you take your lance. So you you close your visor. You take your lance, you salute, and then you tap your visor with your lance oh. to shake the drop. Oh, it off comes the off then. Yeah. Then, ah. the then you go out. Because if you go without taking the drops off your visor, they all go into your eyes. You can't see anything. Oh, my God. I wonder if it works with the motorbike helmet. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I had that on Monday. I was if very wet. If, 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 if you're carrying a lance with you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you could just do it with your hand. You could just bash, bash oh, it. Yeah. But if you... The first run I did, the first run both of us did, neither of us could see because our eyes were absolutely filled with rainwater. Oh yeah, yeah, so we yeah. just rode past each other and had to stop. It's not like nice and safe. But, no, you don't yeah. lower the lance unless you've got a good target because you, yeah. a horse stays. So you just hold the lance up. In fact, you hold it out sideways to indicate a problem. Yeah. Because you shouldn't take a hit on somebody. If somebody's visor's not fastened down and you see it, you can kill them. You should. Yeah. 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 You don't lower the lance. You put your lance out sideways yeah. to indicate. As a sign to say, yeah. Yeah, and then the marshals will work it out, especially if somebody's armor isn't fastened properly, because yeah. that's very dangerous. They might not know. That's very dangerous. Yeah. It's well, chivalry. Well, it's supposed to be chivalry. Well, first of all, I'd like to, uh, to uh, propose a toast to you, sir. You're the first person we've <laughs> had on the show who is a yeah. OBE and also a knight and yeah. unjousting. So <laughs> cheers, sir. Cheers. cheers. Thank you, everybody, for watching. That's fantastic. Um, I still, I still can't believe you did jousting, and then you had rain in your eye, and you couldn't see what you were doing as you were <laughs> hurtling twenty mile an hour at somebody else going the other way. That is just yeah, always worth avoiding that. Do, are you, are you a bit of a, an adrenaline junkie? I think so, actually. I don't think of myself as an adrenaline junkie, but I like pushing the envelope. I like challenging myself. I yeah. like doing things that will teach me about the past as well. It's just, I, I like new experiences. It's great. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Would you ever <laughs> yeah. do like a medieval TV show or a well, film? Poss possibly, yeah. But you know what? I like YouTube because it's about it, we can do it the way we want to do it. Yeah. The great yeah. thing about that these days is, like we're doing now, we're broadcasting to lots of people, and if they're interested, they can listen. And that's doesn't mean that we have anybody telling us what we can do. You know, yeah. we, this is your freedom. show, and it's great. And it's really, yeah, you've got freedom to do what yeah. you like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the great thing about YouTube is you've got that freedom as well. And there's some brilliant stuff on YouTube. There's some oh, absolutely, lunatic yeah. stuff on YouTube as well. <laughs> and that's, that's us. That's us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so I love that. I love the fact that you can um, – there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff for everybody on there yeah. if you dig deep yeah. enough. YouTube yeah. is brilliant. And the trouble with TV is you've got lots of rules, lots of people telling you what to do. And, yeah. and I have to say, I'm not very good with authority. <laughs> yeah, that's a sort of think of that one. Yeah, we got, yeah, got the vibe on that one, I think. <laughs> um, with, um, with the film, the, um, with, with the school, the school boy, um, when do you, do you think that will be go to a, like Netflix or Amazon, uh, Amazon prime or. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. I, I, either, either of those, both of them, we don't know yet. We, we are in the process of working out how to get it to market, how to get it to be mm. shown by. People. Oh my so, God. Yeah, I definitely look forward to see that. Yeah. Is yeah. It, yeah. Maybe, maybe I can get you guys to a private screening. Yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes please. please. Definitely. 
would love to. We, we would. Um, I've got a uh, post-apocalyptic buggy with machine guns and stuff like that. So yeah. if you if, if you can arrange uh, a showing somewhere, we will bring all the buggies and the flamethrowers and all that kind of stuff down. Come in full armor. Yeah. It'd be awesome. Be awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we'll see, see if we can do that. Yeah. So what <laughs> what current projects are you ex super excited about? What's next for Rebellion? What's next? Well, uh, getting the film studios up and running and starting to make productions there, you know, getting things going with the virtual production, the VFX, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we've got some short films we're trying to do. I want to do a, a sort of one of my favorite movies is a movie called Excalibur. I don't know. Yeah, whether, yeah, uh, yeah that's that's cool. yeah. yeah. It's all about knights in armor and horses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I thought it'd be fun to try to do something in the spirit of Excalibur, kind of as a test of the virtual yeah. production. Yeah. So we're hopefully in August going to put together a two or three day small scale shoot with all those virtual screens, like they did for the Mandalorian, uh, oh. and sort of um, and 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 do something a bit Excalibur like. Don't even know what the story is yet, but featuring me uh, yeah. in yeah. armor. Possibly not a horse at this stage. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Might be an unnecessary complication. Yeah. So that's going to be quite exciting. We've got Evil Genius releasing later on, uh, and yeah. then we've got uh, Crikey. I'm trying to think what else. We've got all sorts of books coming out. Do you know what's really exciting about being me? Is you, there's so much you, stuff happening. Yeah. It's great. It's never boring. It's good. Yeah. I've got a whole bunch of really talented people I work with. And they're all making brilliant stuff. Wow. And it's just inspiring. It's absolutely invigorating. It sort of bre it sort of breeds it's itself, doesn't it? It's almost yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Bus, so constantly horrible. bus going. Do, do, yeah. do you have yeah. like a big white board in your office where you think, I've got all this, then I'm doing that, and then that's coming up, and then we've got this book, and then that comic, and that film? And... I, I've, I've, got a, I've got a grey board in here. Oh. It's, all, um, <laughs> it's all stored in here and on paper. I, I don't have a whiteboard as such. I've never... I've never really got with whiteboards. They're a bit sort of, I don't know. I, I can't write that big. It doesn't really work. With my whiteboard is I try and sit down and end up wiping off last week. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, it's gone. I, I, send a, I send a lot of emails to people and I phone and I, I, I send notes and stuff like that. And we have regular meetings with the company with all the different heads of the department. And yeah, yeah, people, yeah. we talk about stuff and we... We bounce ideas around and we try to make sure that games know what's happening in books and comics and all that kind of stuff. So everybody wow. has a has an idea of what's going on. Um, nice. Yeah, I think it works quite well. So, yeah. so whereabouts are all the creative team based? Is it Oxford? Is it we have studios in uh, the HQ is in Oxford and then there's a Didcot studios there. So um, a place called Osney Mead in Oxford. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Liverpool. There's a studio in Liverpool uh, near Runcorn. Uh, there's a studio in Warwick as well near Warwick Castle. Oh, right, which yeah. Is great. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Right, that's, that's, that's near us. Yeah. yeah fantastic. And then uh, there's a studio. We've got a studio up near Wakefield, up near Leeds. Oh. Uh, which we call the which we call North. That's the newest studio. So there's four of us, and we're we're distributed around the UK in a, in an interesting way. Yeah. Is the studio sort of mixed? Is it sort of like or or, or you know certain studios are the games, and then other ones are the comics? No, it's all, it's all mixed. Basically, all the comics are done in Oxford, and then with freelancers, and same yeah. with the books. Um, but uh, we we combine teams, so there'll be a lot of people in. Warwick working on Evil Genius as well as people in Oxford. There's a lot of people in, in North working on other projects and uh, Liverpool's working on Sniper Elite and other things as well. So it's all mixed up, all summed up. Depends on what people's expertise is yeah. and what they work on. People work on lots of different projects, not just you're on this project for three years. It might be you'll be working on this project for a year and then you work on another project or whatever it might be. And some people don't work on any one project. They work on you know, quality assuring your testing, for example, yeah. they'll work. Yeah. And and then the engine team, the technology team will, will create the engine technology that uh, is for every project. Yeah, it's so, you know, there's shared resources, we call them. There, there's a yeah, lot of yeah, people yeah. Are projects. Yeah. Is, is, so what's coming out on the PlayStation 5? Uh, which which uh, of the new games are 
destined you know for what? that. You know what? I'm not sure what's been announced yet. I have oh. to be a bit careful. <laughs> oh, yeah. because, I didn't um, want to drop you. Um, it, 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 it's uh, about to yeah, be. It's, it's, it's about to be announced. Yes. Yeah. I'll get a load of hassle. Uh, <laughs> oh. So You're the I'm boss, though. To, hey. <laughs> I, I know I'm not in America, but I'm going to plead the fifth on that. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. that's fine. It does look a great machine, and also the new Xbox, the graphics, just look crazy on it now, doesn't it? Do you know what? They're both brilliant machines. They yeah. are both super machines to work for, and they both can make such brilliant games. But the challenge, the challenge is how much it costs to make yeah. a game yeah. these days. I mean, games are huge. They take a lot of people a long time, and so costs are going up and up and up. Um, and you know, you've got to make, it's not just a game doesn't have to just look good. It has to play well as well. And that, that's a huge thing. You know, just yeah. being good looking as a game isn't, isn't enough anymore. Isn't enough. Yeah. No, not nowadays. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. a good game. And there's so many damn good games coming out. It's, Did someone mention No Man's good. Sky there? Sorry, No Man's Sky? Yeah. Look, yeah, look, yeah. Look, really, look, look really good. But the initial gameplay was... Bit pants. Yeah, well, a lot of people. I I played it. It's I I liked better. it, but it was a bit shallow. I felt, and I think yeah. it was possibly released a bit early. You know, this is always temptation yeah. in the industry. You you know, you, your game. You've got to get some money back in for the game, and so. But yeah. the the guys have worked on it a lot in the subsequent. It's a really oh, yeah, good game. I, yeah, now now it's yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah. And that's yeah. one of the great things about the digital space is you can keep adding. Yeah, you can yeah. keep adding yeah. to your game that's been like released. For, for, so, Fallout seventy six. I mean, that got... Yeah, I've not played that. I've played all the other Fallouts, but I haven't played Fallout 76. Well, it's weirdly. completely different because you've got no sort of interactive NPCs. But, right. But, but, but at least for the first however long it's been out, eight months, but now you have. So, right. again, it's, it's doing exactly yeah. what you said. It's, uh, it, it's, it's in a digital space. You just do an update and, you know, the team is still working, still working, still working. Yeah, it'd be funny if they did that with movies, wouldn't it? You watch a movie and then they keep editing it and changing it. Yeah, <laughs> they do. They do. Do you, you... That ending's different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's that actor? Who's that one? I, I, think, I, I think I've got four different versions of Apocalypse now. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And, the and Blade Runner. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. Always okay. Sneaky ones. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So it does happen a bit, but not not <laughs> yeah. the same way. As not as flexible. Yeah. No. Uh, Would um. Would 2000 AD ever do a comic with Marvel or DC, like a crossover, a bit like the Judge Dredd Batman one again? Would that, do you we, think we, that would ever happen? Fun, haven't we? Yeah. We have done a few crossovers. We did Dredd, Dredd versus Predator versus Aliens, I think. I think we've done Dredd versus Batman. Uh, I'd like to do Dredd versus Superman. I always think Superman and Dredd. <laughs> That'd be great. Dredd, yeah. Um, I think we did. I always thought Lobo would be an interesting character to cross over with Dread. Wow. Um, yeah, because of this sort of antithesis, yeah, hard drinking, mm. you know, hard smoking, yeah. the opposite in, in many ways of, of Dread. Um, yeah, we, we have, yeah. So we have done some crossovers, but they're always difficult to organize. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where the rights come in again? I must admit, yeah, I would love does. to see a Batman film with Dread in there as well. It would just be brilliant. I'm yeah, surprised. Yeah, we, I'm surprised DC have never contacted you about that. Well, yeah. I mean, we get, we do get contacted from time to time. We we've we've had our characters appear in other movies and bits and bobs, and, we, and then you get problems like the ABC Warriors, which don't really belong in Dread's world, yeah. appearing in the Stallone movie, and yeah. that mm. caused a huge problem because the filmmakers didn't know that the ABC Warriors hadn't been licensed. <laughs> oh, right. Mm -hmm. so, hang on, why are you using ABC Warriors? And Judge Freddy, I don't have a license to do that. Oh, gosh. So there were all sorts of, all my time, there was all sorts of hoo-ha about yeah. that. It worked well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, people get confused. But, uh, yeah, there's so many crossovers. You know, we, uh, we've we done our own internal crossovers as well. So I like this Strontium Dog Judge Dredd yeah. crossover. Yeah. yeah. And that last yeah. Mascara panel where... There's Dread and uh, Johnny Alpha walking, walking sort of towards the camera. Who's yeah. going to mess with us? Yeah, yeah. 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 totally, totally. Yeah, fantastic moment. Oh my god! So, just just outside of Rebellion, what is your favourite film? One that you haven't made. Favourite film? Cool, oh, blimey. Um, I love Excalibur because it's sort of knights in armour and that kind of stuff. Um, I like the never-ending story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love Labyrinth. Oh. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Labyrinth. Labyrinth, amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Love that yeah. film. Never ending story, my dog looks like. <laughs> yeah. The dragon. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I, um, uh, what else did I like? What, what did I watch recently? I, I do like the Marvel the Marvel movies, they're a bit sort of, they're a bit popcorn-y. Yeah. I do, you know, I do sometimes, like them. Sometimes yeah. you want popcorn. Yeah, exactly. Don't, so don't too, too yeah. thoughtful. I'm blanking now on what I've watched recently. Um, in the past, um, I tell you what, there's a TV show that I thought was really cool. Yeah. Uh, do you remember uh, Quatermass? Yes. Yeah. The yeah, Quatermass in the pit. Yeah. And Ringstone, yes. Round, Ringstone Round and that TV show. Yeah. That yeah. TV and Triffids. I always thought Triffids were really good and should make yeah. a comeback. Yeah, yeah. I always thought Triffids because uh, that's post-apocalyptic, but kind alien-y. of yeah, alieny as well. Yeah. I always like that. So um, yeah, do you know what? There are too many bloody good movies for me to pick them. <laughs> I loved uh, what was the one? I but watched? never ending story. Oh, could you imagine the remake? Nowadays, yeah. with, with all what you have available, Ooh, I, I, you know, I've got the pictures already in front of me. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> she's, she's gone. Gone. Dark Crystal. Dark, Dark Crystal. Crystal. Yeah, I love Dark Crystal. Yeah, yeah. and Skeksis yeah. and uh, mm. Do you like Time Bandits? I love that. Garfim. Yeah. Do you like Time Bandits? Time Bandits, I loved. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I love that Terry Gilliam's mad Gilliam, stuff. Gilliam's just Gilliam's yeah. lunatic, but in a good way. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An, um, an expensive good way. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he's like to work with. It would be absolutely brilliant to work with him. I uh, probably never will, but it would be wonderful to see that kind of creative mania yeah. in yeah. action. Wouldn't that be brilliant? It'd be an oh, absolutely it's... wonderful thing to experience. And of course, the Alien Aliens movie was absolutely important to us. The trouble is, I've seen that movie, must have seen it a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I tell you, I tell you what. Salute of the Jugger. Yeah. Ah, hey. Hey. Uh, we, yeah. We actually I don't play, know that we one. actually play the people who play real Jugger games. Uh, especially oh, like the Czech Jugger guys. Oh, it's awesome. And over in America. So again, we will have to entice you over to one of the festivals. Yeah. You will yeah, love man. it. Well, you have the yeah. cage fighter as well, Timmy. The yeah. full armor oh, yeah. fighting. fighting. Round yeah. fight, cage fighting. So, they had armor, yeah, full yeah. metal armor. You would love it. Oh, That's I'd true. love that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think what else. I do love my classic Japanese movies as well. Oh, wow. The so Kurosawa's movies, The Seven oh, Samurai. Seven yeah, Samurai. Seven yeah. Samurai. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Yo, Yo, Jimbo. Yeah. And those guys, those actors back then really knew how to use their swords. Yeah. And that's a big thing for me. I I, oh. I see actors Jesus, using swords, and if that. they yeah. can't ride or they can't use the swords, it takes yeah. me out of the, yeah. the story of it. Um, but back then, they really knew what they were doing. They were they were absolutely brilliant. It yeah, would be yeah. lovely to see like an Excal- Excalibur kind of film, you know, with Knights of the Round Table, but with like a samurai warrior f- somewhere, you know, mm. somehow arrived in the UK. I think you could do mashups, can't you? Like yeah, that? Yeah, and that would be yeah. awesome, no, especially for the, for the market over there. Yeah, yeah, but you always have to. I remember, I, I obviously, I love Robin Hood. So Robin of Sherwood, the TV show, the TV yeah. series that Michael Pride in was influential yeah. for me as well. It's, I, I absolutely love that. And it's filmed in the woods and it's absolutely brilliant. I love the Robin Hood story. Um, but the, um, what was the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves? Yeah. That was an interesting, was interesting. I really one. liked that movie. The only trouble is they land at Dover and then he says, I'll be in my father's castle by nightfall. I'm thinking... Not unless you get on a fast in the past. And not the M25 this time of night, mate. You're never getting liar. <laughs> yeah. Well, thinking, yeah. Hang on. Nottingham. Oh. Nottingham is such a long way from Dover, actually. Not on you know, a horse yeah. either. Do you, know, do you know what? For me, those little things in movies can take you out of it. Yeah. All they needed to do, I know I'm being super hyper picky here, but all he needed to say is, in a week's time, we'll be in my father's yeah, house. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> yeah. That's all it would have taken. And yeah. then it's like, yeah, and then fade out, fade back, and they'd be travelling for a week to get to Nottingham. Yeah. That would have yeah. been fine, you know. Yeah. So little tiny things like that. Do you know in the Judge Dredd movie, the the in Dread, the recent one, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you know when Dread turns to Anderson and yeah. she's not wearing the helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the line where where. Yeah, it, it, they they talk about that, and and Dread yeah. says um, she she says it interferes with my psi powers, 
and not, it's not as much as a bullet would, yeah. she says. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember talking about that moment in the movie, in the script with Alex and saying, it would be really good if there's an ex- explanation why she doesn't wear a helmet. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, everyone's just wearing a helmet. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. Always so helmet they on. need to be a little tiny throwaway line yeah. that yeah. explains yeah. to the viewer why, why she's wearing a helmet. Yeah. And then it's fine. Then yeah. it's absolutely fine. Yeah. yeah, I've got that. If I watch a film and it gets, you know, it's just a stupid plot and you're like, oh, no, I can't watch it. Yeah. It's just yeah. stupid. Yeah. You know, and then I just fall off it. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. Alex Garland did a, a, a stunning job, though, on, yeah. on the film. Absolutely. It was just. I, I love all his films. I think Dread was just... It's possibly one of the best 3D films made, I think. I think it just... It, it, it was yeah. so stunning. I think the only thing that let it down was the advertising because a lot of people didn't really know it was out and around. And it was I think, very delayed release. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, the release was delayed nine months because we were, we were contemplating making a game at the same sort of time. Yeah. But there wasn't really time. So when it got green lit, there wasn't time to make a game before the release. Mm-hmm. But then the release was delayed nine months-ish, maybe 11 months. And so there would have been, a, yeah, we might have been able to get a game done in the time, but we hadn't started it, so we couldn't. Yeah. So, yeah, the release yeah, yeah. of that movie was very troubled, unfortunately. Yeah. Which is a shame. That, it's such a great film. I think you would have been more successful if you would have had, the, you know, the push. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree entirely. Yeah. And Alex and, uh, and uh, Andrew McDonald, uh, who I know were really well, moved on to great things. I mean, they did the... 28 days later, yeah. 28 weeks later, yeah. which are great. And I was in 28 weeks later in high vis running out of a building. If you <laughs> get the Blu ray copy of it and you freeze frame it, you can see me. Hey! <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. Hey. A horse, a horse, my behind. <laughs> yeah. 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 High vis. <laughs> if, you, if you filmed Excalibur, if you actually go, go for that, is there a castle that you would use? Oh, I tell you what, there's some fantastic castles. Uh, um, Bodium uh, oh, down yeah. south is yeah. really interesting. Uh, Leeds yeah. Castle, which is in Kent, not actually anywhere near Leeds, the city, uh, is also beautiful because it's on a lake. So yeah. that would be... And, and it's like an amphitheatre almost, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. But there are also sort of abandoned, ruined castles, which might, which might be good as mm-hmm. well. And there's a couple of smaller, mysterious... I'm... I'm I'm really into my small, mysterious locations in England. There's so many yeah. places that are little known that you can you can discover and you just walk there and find them. Um, I'm a great. I, I love my Iron Age hill forts as well, and they yeah. Uppington White Horse yeah. up in Oxfordshire yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, I, I yeah, it would depend. Though the thing is, when is the King Arthur story set? Well, eighth century, not yeah. really knights in armor, yeah. post-Roman. Uh, but I think the fifteenth century with plate mail, with plate armor, is the thing to go for because that's really when the story takes off. Yeah. Is when yeah. Mallory is yeah. writing yeah. about the sort point, of yeah. knights in armor that never were really like yeah. that. Yeah. But you, 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 you wouldn't sort of want to go to I know Bulgaria or somewhere to film it, as as so many. Um, well, they're all brilliant. Yeah, they're all brilliant places. They're typically filmed in because they're cheaper yeah, um, yeah. and you can get more for your money. But a fair few, no, fair few castles and things knocking about as well. They do. They're it's fantastic places to film as well, and really great stunt crews and good mm. good people working mm. over there. Yeah, I mean, the w- which was superb, me, I thought. Yeah. But the trouble for me is I want to be involved in all of these things. Yeah. And for me <laughs> to travel, I've got to work out what to do with my horses because I look after my horses. Yeah. So oh, right. I kind of want to keep things local because yeah. then I can get really involved properly yeah. in what yeah. we do. And that's kind of important to me. It's all very well saving some money, having it done in Prague or South Africa, but I can't do that myself. Yeah. And I, I always think, they're my toys. I want to play with them myself, yeah. not give them to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. It, yeah. But I think that's I think that's the, the, the wonderful thing about Rebellion is it, it is very sort of UK centric. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why everybody, you know, everybody's totally behind you and want you to succeed in everything you do because we're everybody's proud of you. You know, who makes films over here? I know that they, they do some green screen and stuff like that, but actually making mm. films and having software houses uh, James and computer Bond. games. <laughs> well James Bond, you know what I mean though. But yeah. it's um I think it's I, I think it's really, really awesome that you are doing stuff in the UK. 
Well, thank you. I mean, it, it's practical as well, and it's there's some fantastic people to work with over here. And as I say, it's I I kind of want to be involved, and I want everybody around us, you know, the team, to be involved. Yeah. And the only yeah. way they can do that is it's, it's, it's here. If it's yeah. here. Yeah. What, what did you think of? Did you ever see Ironclad? I haven't seen it. I've only seen clips of it though. Oh, right. Is that I, filmed I, in Wales. Yeah, I love that film. The amount I learned about sort of how to attack castles and stuff like that was uh, it was actually <laughs> really, useful. really good. Yeah, very useful. Really great film. Really gritty. Uh, it's like yeah. a siege film, but it's it's actually really good. Very, very impressed. Actually, yeah, I, I'll have to I'll have to look then on your recommendation. I'll have to go and have a look at that. Um, I've seen. I've got a lot of YouTuber friends uh, who who do sort of similar things that I do. Sort of, and some of the times they do sort of. Uh, they they do they they not criticize but they review movies and that kind of stuff yeah. and they're usually they yeah. historical ones and some of them are a bit more picky about the historical accuracy yeah. um, <laughs> than others um, and that, that I kind of I like watching what they do as well and how they interpret uh, things. See the the thing for me with historical accuracy is and it, stop me if this is boring but armor isn't costume it's meant to protect you. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you're wearing armor and your throat is exposed, and you're yeah. supposed to be fighting, or you're not wearing a helmet, I always think that's insane. It's meant to be protective safety equipment first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you should protect your face and your throat. And whenever I see that, I always go, oh. Uh, or if somebody tries to stab through armor and they do it, they they succeed in stabbing through the armor, and you go, well, what's the point wearing the armor then? Because it is heavy and uncomfortable and difficult <laughs> yeah. to move it. Yeah. If it slows you down but doesn't protect you, what's the bloody point? Yeah. yeah. Um, when it's fantasy, when it's something like Game of Thrones, which is great, and it's got dragons and things, I don't really mind. Although the armor still needs to be protective, even if it's in a fantasy yeah. setting. Yeah. It's got yeah. to work, in my opinion, yeah. as well. Yeah. If it's historical, it's got to be historically appropriate or as good as they can get it. Yeah. Um, uh, that's my. Those are my little things. Yeah. I suppose. Uh, what What was your favourite historic weapon? Because there are some crazy ones out there. Was there any one that you thought I like this yeah. idea? A, a horseman's pick, basically. There's a type of weapon called a horseman's pick. So if you can imagine an ice pick on a longer haft, yeah. Uh, and, and you imagine you just pat into somebody's head and kill them straight away. Um, yeah, horseman's pick, I think, is the most professionally lethal medieval weapon i can think of because it's so understated it's just a it's just a spike slightly curved uh and it's sharp and it's part of a hammer and you yeah. just pop it on yeah. top of the side and you kill them that's it oh wow would, would they have that as like a secondary bit of uh, weaponry so they'd have a sword first and then just get that the pick yeah, out i don't know whether i can i don't know if i can i'll put my sword down and see if i can find <laughs> what have i got here i've got an I, i've got an axe just, like, just going through the armory <laughs> find the axe. i think you've got right, the yeah, best got house ever jason yeah yeah right here's oh am i still on camera have i moved the camera yeah. too much no, 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 no. Still on. Yeah. so this so this oh my god um, blimey that's the spike and that's yeah. the axe, the axe. So if I, yeah so this is a this is a horseman's axe it's got the lanyard that goes around the handle, but so um, you can't lose it. Quite long, um, and uh, quite lethal. Uh, wow! So you can oh see it. God, it's it, it's um, a bit like so an axe, isn't it? I've been practicing using this from horseback on a gelatin target, and uh, <laughs> it's really quite unpleasant. Um, <laughs> exactly. I should imagine. Yeah, in one of my in videos, I um I use a ballistic skull. As well with a, oh, with, a with a battle axe, yeah. and um, I explain that it felt a bit like uh, if you were to take an Easter egg and you were to sort of hit it with a hammer, it's got that sort of biscuity breaking feeling. <laughs> yeah, uh, really horrible. That's <laughs> what it's currently like to smash somebody's skull in with a hammer, oh and that's just God. really brutal and horrible. Oh. So not um, just a melon. But you can no, not like a melon. But you can see that the the spike there, yeah. uh, it, that just you know just just goes in very easily into somebody's wow. skull. And, and, and there's just enough weight so that it, it's not unwieldy. Yeah, but not, it, not very it, heavy really. It's you yeah. know it's sort of like a like an like a hef, heavy hammer. Yeah. But this yeah. is sharp, and then yeah. that just, you just basically you ride past and you drop it on somebody's head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> another reason not to have a flat <laughs> yeah yeah don't have a flat helmet on the, on the yeah. top of your helmet yeah 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 yeah, yeah. M move the mead to one side and donk him that's why you need the deflecting surfaces as well you know so you have a deflecting yeah. point of thing on yeah. your on top of your head and so it, it doesn't it happen it's, yeah. 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 big shoulder pads big and, and it keeps, keeps the rain out of your good. eyes as well yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only problem I have with post-apocalyptic kind of kit is there are lots of spiky bits, and the trouble with spiky bits is they catch on <laughs> They do, yeah. Yeah. they do. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, that's stage dive. <laughs> well, I know it looks great, but, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> also with us as well, it, it, I can't watch like a post-apocalyptic film if the weathering's bad on, on the stuff. If it's like brand yeah. new black trousers and, and you're just going, really? You know, yeah. Yeah. where did you get brand new boots from? And I just can't, I just yeah. can't watch it. Yeah. Everybody's got motorbike armor. Back. Yeah, why is it a motorbike cross armor? It's it's just yeah. sort of lazy <laughs> done. It's all sort of stereotypical, you yeah. know, post-apocalyptic yeah. stuff. Cheap, cheap stuff, yeah. So you must see because that's interesting. Because when I look at horses or you know medieval stuff, I immediately can see issues. Yeah, you must have exactly the same Ex when you see your post apocalyptic Exactly, you're yeah. just thinking, really? Oh, they've got loads of spikes, yeah. and you're just going, you're going to keep spiking your own head there, or you've got loads yeah. of tassels. Yeah, exactly. you're, get, you're going to yeah. get you get stuck on the buggy, or you know, you're going <laughs> to. I saw some brilliant fantasy armor, and it sort of had claws like this on the shoulder pads, like this. Yeah, and it was yeah. sort of basically Smack. medieval, but it had these claws. And I was thinking, you do that, and you're going to yeah. stab yourself. <laughs> you stab yourself in the head. You know, do, it looks cool, but it's really dangerous to wear. Totally. Do you have, um, because you own armor, do you actually have mannequins with all your armor on show? Do, is, is, yeah, I, I have four mannequins. Excellent. Are, awesome. <laughs> I did think about putting one behind me here, but I don't really have space. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that would be cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got two yeah, mannequins at home, so I've got... Um, uh, well, they're both in, in the locker at the moment, but I've got, they, they wear all my judge armor. And then I actually yeah. managed to buy from the, from the 2012 film, the Hall of Justice sign. So I actually got it from Did the, you? yeah, I've yeah. actually owned that and it's in our guest bedroom. So that's. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's fantastic. I love, I love movie memorabilia. I love things yeah. that have been, yeah. um, been in the movie. Oh, I was going to say, you, you asked me about movies. So Hawk the Slayer. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome film. Um, you imagine yeah. a modern version of Hawk the Slayer. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That would be good, wouldn't it? Oh, my God. Yeah. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. write well, that one down. To... Definitely write that yeah. one down. <laughs> you know the mind sword. Get the rights. You know the mind sword. Yeah. Get it. You know the sword that, that comes. Think of the great sword in your hand and it will be so. Cool. Oh, Yay, got the mind sword. Um, I, got to, I got to handle and I got to borrow that from Terry, the director. He yeah. lent me the mind the movie one. Oh, and uh, I think that one of the videos is on the mind sword. Oh my yeah. god! We, we, we did some cheesy effects of it coming towards me and everything. It's, yeah. uh, it's a real thrill. A real thrill. Oh, wow. really, yeah. oh my yeah. god! So uh, I'm super excited about everything that's coming up. So um, what is your? So so we've gone through um, that. Hopefully, you're gonna once all the COVID's sort of released. Uh, you'll get yeah. back to is is your next sort of project then going to be so we've got the games already developing were they okay working were they working at home during the covid lockdown yeah everybody's working everybody's working from home awesome. yeah yeah we we had a we had a mass we had some yeah, huge amount of it um hassle getting mm -hmm. everybody up and running everybody's yeah. pretty much everybody's working okay from home we didn't have to furlough anybody everybody's getting on with things awesome. There's a few people going back to work now because we've got all the safety kit in place now. So a few people want to work um, from the office now. So I reckon gradually people will start to go back into the office and meet people. Same you know, with I miss, mine. I, I miss socialising with people a little bit. You know, it's mm. a kind of this is great, yeah. but it's also nice to meet people in real life as well. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully in the next few months everything will start to get going again, and we'll get back onto filming things and productions and all that kind of stuff yeah oh, yeah have you got any more uh, any books coming out soon we haven't really spoken about the, books, the comics I can't remember what they, yeah i can't remember what they are i don't know exactly what's coming out in the graphic novels either unfortunately i can't remember the detail i should have practiced i should have i should have found out what's coming out and plugged it no. <laughs> Sorry, absolutely. I can't remember. Lots of great stuff. Lots of great stuff. <laughs> Cop out. <laughs> so, um, during the lockdown, is there any TV show or anything that you've watched and you thought, "Oh, I've, I've quite really enjoyed this"? 
Do you know what? No, I haven't been watching much TV. I'm, I've been doing quite a lot of YouTube research and watching other people's YouTube channels and that kind of stuff and um, playing a lot of games because I've got a lot of our games that aren't released. I've got them on my laptop and I've been playing them and kind of, you know, as they, you know, they're not finished yet. So it's an interesting, it's like looking at raw footage of a movie or something yeah. and trying to work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are games that aren't finished yet. And that's always exciting and nice to see it start to take shape and start to crystallize and start to become good and other areas where you go guys this bit just doesn't work we're gonna have to do something about it and then you change it um yeah you know just like putting on a show like you're one of your shows you know one one set works really well and another doesn't work so well and you change it and you modify it and at the end of it you've got something really great so um exactly the same so i've I've been focusing on the horses making more youtube channel things youtube I have to say, I haven't been watching telly very much, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Also, interesting we anyway. No. Yeah. 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 no. I mean, there are some great things coming out, but um, I'll tell you what's going to be interesting. In about six months' time, when stuff that's supposed to be being made now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. Going to be watching, we're going to be watching, I don't know, reruns of things that we're. <laughs> I bet it is, yeah, because there's now no- new stuff coming. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're showing yeah. stuff that's been in production. But there's going to come a time when no, there's much less yeah. coming through. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder what, what everybody's going to do. It's going to be interesting. Crazy, yeah. I must well, admit... Dad's army again. Dad's <laughs> army repeats. <Yeah. laughs> I must admit, for me, uh, The Boys with Carl Urban is amazing on yeah. Amazon Prime. It is. I'm enjoying that. It is awesome. It's. Um, I haven't seen it. It's sort of what, oh. what, what would it be like if there were superheroes, but they're all bits, they're not very nice people? And yeah, right. and Carl's a human who's sort of anti superhero. It's really right. good. It's it sounds like it sounds a little bit similar to something we had in two thousand and eight called the Ten Seconders. I don't even remember the Ten Seconders. I don't know. That no. was basically that was basically superheroes come to Earth and start out as all good and everybody thinks, Oh wow, this is really yeah. happening. So it turns out they're all psychopathic lunatics. It's um, it's that... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that the same thing? And it, basically, the yeah. 10 seconders are the resistance. And they're called the 10 seconders because that's, on average, how long they last when they're fighting against oh these superheroes. That, that is the story yeah. plot. Is it? Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I, I didn't realise at all. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I don't know whether they were influenced by that, but it's certainly quite some it, years ago. Yeah, it does okay. sound remarkably like it, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might have to look at that. Get your legal no. team to have a look yeah. at that <laughs> so, I'll get my men in wigs on it, though. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when are you out um, on the horses next? Friday. Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, definitely tomorrow. Sunday I'll be training. I'm practicing with a heavy wall lance at the moment, so I've got to um, I've got to improve my technique. This is a, a an 18 foot long pole with a sharp spike at the end, oh and I've got to um, I've got to get a bit more used to it um, before I do some filming with it. So, so yeah, I'm practicing with a proper full weight sharp wall lance at speed. Yeah. Oh my God. Good luck with that one. Oh how, dear. How, how do you how do you actually start practicing this stuff? So first of all, have you got? Do you work with a builder who actually makes the the weapons? Have you got a? Certain... I made that. Myself. I made it myself oh, basically. Wow. I I, oh I got, got a, a long piece of wood and I've carved it down myself with a with a draw knife and a, a and a plane. Um, so I made it myself because there isn't nobody makes lance. It used to be. It used to be a proper job. You know, yeah, it used to be professional yeah. yeah. back in the day. Well, not so many thousands of them probably. There's nobody around that really does it anymore. Um, yeah, I can't believe there's actually a market for war lances these days. Give it a couple of more months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the best wood for war lances? Well, actually, it's the the original medieval uh, uh, manuals say uh, poplar or pine for a uh, joust of peace. Where you don't want to kill somebody, yeah, so it's it, it's yeah. 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 But if you want to kill somebody, you use ash because oh, ash yeah. doesn't break very well. No, oh. ash more. Yeah. Yeah. So you use ash, ash for war lance, basically uh, ash, ash to kill a man, poplar for a joust à plaisance, so yeah. a joust at pleasure, Which, so you're not yeah. actually yeah. close to kill some. Yeah. So, how, yeah, so how long is the lance? They vary, and there's no official 
no official proper length basically at least 12 foot basically 12 to 18 feet there, there are some longer than 18 but basically 12 12 foot 12 foot long is about about average yeah oh my gosh and you're well, holding it with one hand at one end yeah so yeah. You know, they're not they're not particularly heavy they probably weigh four or five kilos so they're not really heavy, but they're very end heavy because you've got yeah. uh, you've got yeah. the tip of the lance, which is yeah. quite small, yeah. but it's twelve feet away on a lever. How, and anybody how, knows, how, how, how far how far is the counterbalance or behind you? There, there isn't any counterbalance. You no, hold no, it at one I mean, end. It's a bit behind you. Right. Oh, I hold it. You hold it at about eleven foot. Okay, eleven right. foot one right. end. Yeah. So oh, basically, right. you've got most of the lance so ahead of you. Not much behind. Yeah. Not much behind at all. No, just enough to catch under your arm and to lock to couch it's called you yeah, couch right. it here and you lock it um and then basically when it's locked in you you, you move your torso to aim it you oh, can use okay. your, move yeah. your arm a little bit basically you move your torso yeah that's one of the skills in in jousting is is disconnecting your upper body from your lower body when you ride as anybody that rides knows you your balance yeah. can yeah, change when it starts. yeah uh, and when you're jousting, obviously, if you lean that way, the horse will go that way sometimes, yeah. and that's not what you joust. You don't want the horse to do that. <laughs> uh, you want the horse to go in a straight yeah. line, nice straight, steady gallop yeah. in, in a straight line, and then stop at the end. Stopping is really important, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you're when you're galloping, because I, I I do ride, but I'm very very bad. As I've told you before, I'm a more of a stunt stunt rider. Um, <laughs> do you have? Are the horses sort of more trained to run in a straight line because they know they're used to it and they sort of run by the side? Yeah, they, they, they are. They're, so the best horses will stay nice and calm at the beginning. Yeah. So they'll they'll stand there nice and quietly and you can focus on what you're going to do. And then you just squeeze and you go forward in a nice sort of gentle and then get up to the gallop. And then once you hit, everybody relaxes and slows down and stops. But not all horses do that. And as you know, horses get really excited sometimes. Yeah. And then the horse... Yeah. The horse and and the breed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I've, got, I've got horses called Andalusians and Lusitanos are typically more hot-blooded than other types of horse. Oh, and they God. get very busy. They jump around yeah. and spin up. They make it... They look great, but they make... Very jousting. hard for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That, that is uh, there's a question from Lolo Slinger. Has the wool mule got a wake name yet? Ah, oh, the mule with no name. Yes, yeah. I have a mule. He has no name. Oh. Um, he, has, he has a stable name. He has a stable name. Um, and I'm I'm still running through various possibilities that uh, uh, my commentators have um, uh, have suggested. There's some brilliant names uh, there. But at the moment, he's called Muley as his sort of stable name. Yeah. Or, or officially, he's the mule with no name, which you never know. The mule with my, no name is quite a good name. Yeah. Very, very, yeah. Very, very, yeah. So, so the mule, is it, is it like either. a donkey? Yeah. Is he as vocal got, as a donkey? Uh, he's got a bray. Uh, he's got a mule bellow. Um, mm. It's like a bray, but also you combine it with a neigh. So mm. donkeys, they do the eeyore it's sound. Like, uh, yeah. Horses do the neigh sound. Yeah. And mule, bizarrely, because they're half horse, half donkey, yeah. kind of do something almost in the middle. <laughs> really but I've never, I've never seen one. <laughs> one of the videos has got him making a. I was measuring him for a saddle, one of more recent videos, and he makes a braying noise. He's calling to his friends, and, oh. and people. Oh. It's a great walk. <laughs> do, do, out, of all, out of all your horses, do you have a do you have a, a specifically naughty one out of the bunch? Oh, they can all have their moments. Anybody, you know what it's we like. Do, yeah. they can all, some, some of them are, some of them are mostly good, and some of them are mostly naughty. Um, but they all have a naughty side, and they all have a good side. So, yeah. So, so one of my stallions, black stallion, Mister Dibbs, is uh, stunt trained, so he can rear and he can capriole, jump up and kick, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, he is so highly strung that uh he he never relaxes so you when you're riding him you can't relax because you just have to yeah. look after him and he, yeah. he's always on he's always sensitive high, yeah, high he's maintenance sensitive, but he's high maintenance but he's also a stallion he's always 100 oh. there yeah yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah whenever he goes somewhere he goes there with yeah. full full. <laughs> and other horses like Warlord, for example. Warlord's one of my uh, white Lusitanos. Yeah. He, I do a lot of my riding on him. 
I've been with him for such a long time that he's quite calm some of the time, but once he starts going, he can get fizzier and fizzier yeah, and fizzier. Yeah, yeah. We do the quiet stuff first. Because <laughs> you know it's going to build. Yeah, you build up. And do, do, you, yeah. do you find they get excited when you're jousting or whatever in front of a crowd? Because they can sense everybody's oh, yeah. excitement. The excitement, oh, yeah, yeah the, the energy. Emotion, yeah, the energy, people <laughs> cheering. Yeah, they get, and they start showing off high stepping and, <laughs> and, and, and it all looks great but deep inside with your helmet on you're thinking oh, oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> i know what's coming yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so they're all different then i mean horses are individuals every single horse is different yeah. they have different personalities oh, yes. they have things they love things they hate they have best friends they have moods. They can be a bit grumpy sometimes. They can be happy other times. It, n living with horses is is a wonderful experience, and they are pretty much like human beings. They're complete, completely complicated, yeah. just like <laughs> we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, definitely. nicely put. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Mark, is there any more questions on the from the? Um. No, there's there a few that. out there. Um, Martin Martin um, Wyatt wanted to know: Is jousting armor a lot heavier than field plate? Um, actually, it is. Yes, particularly the helmet as well. And in later periods, and the, obviously they were jousting in ordinary field armor uh, in the middle of the medieval period, and before that, the Normans were jousting in 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 mail and helmets. So it got more and more specialized as the medieval period goes on, and then you get to the latter period where they've got specialist jousting kit so yes it's um it, it does become much more heavy and unpleasant and there are mm. there's a type of helmet called a frog mouth which i've jousted in which has no visor oh, basically what? how yeah, do you do it then you have it you slide it over your head it's yeah. fastened here and at the back with um with, uh, with what are called nails actually they're not nailed into you they're nailed down yeah, yeah. Right. Like, like pins, uh, so, and yeah. basically you can't Get the helmet off without help. Oh my God. You oh are God. you are nailed into the helmet. Oh, it's awful. I know a lot of people can't joust in them because they're too claustrophobic. Yeah. Because you are stuck in that helmet. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You can't. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> but they're very uh, very safe. Doug, Doug Duval wanted to know of of all the um, some museum pieces which you have come across or featured on your YouTube channel, which one would you like to half inch? <laughs> borrow <laughs> with, with, with my moral code I, I couldn't well, no, right. possibly no, 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 no. Any. yeah being but a nice if it, if, it, if it came on the market at a sensible price sure okay so uh, Henry VIII's tournament armour that he, he commissioned for fighting uh, in the field of the cloth of gold was absolutely wow. amazing that's an amazing piece of uh, engineering and artistry as well yeah. and it was gilded yeah. alternating gilding on it but it was made very quickly by the Greenwich um, armourers as well, because all the rules changed at the last minute. So they had three months to make this armour, which doesn't sound, it sounds like quite a lot of time, but as anybody that makes I mean, things yeah. knows, yeah. it actually takes yeah. longer than that. Um, so that's a fantastic... And, how, and Henry probably changed in size numerous times in that three months. <laughs> yeah, well, he was very fit and healthy and super sporty when he was younger, but as he got he really older, was, he was a lot of the way, poor guy, Something and he got very awesome. grumpy as well. Yeah. And he had a yeah. he had a long lasting wound in his leg, which must have caused him oh, sleepless gosh. nights yeah. and everything. So poor bastard, he was uh, he was an uh, absolute sports star, and the king, and fabulously wealthy, uh, and you know, and absolute power. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and was in miserable pain most of his life. That's just yeah. awful. Yeah. And, and, and but, most, um, most of the depictions of him are from the, the later period. We think of him as being some sort of fat old bloke with um yes, whole body legs. Picture, yeah, but, but, standing. But, yeah, but but uh, early on he was really good looking. Well, not that I knew him that well, but <laughs> yeah. well, if you think about it, basically he was the head. He was um, so he was a major sporting star, and he was you know he was supposedly extremely attractive by the standards of the day. He was <laughs> a huge, a very tall, very sporting. Very, very wealthy. So if you imagine if you combine the biggest sports star you know with yeah. the richest person you know yeah. and the yeah. most uh, and the, the person who's most in charge, like president or whatever, yeah. Yeah. he's all three of those Although, rolled yeah. into yeah. one yeah. person. Into one. And he's a young and he's a young man. Yeah. yeah. And and so, you know, he's you know, 
he's not likely to to take no for an answer for anything he wants. So he must have off the rings. Needed to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Must have been an amazing person. But other 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 pieces of museum kit. So Henry VIII's armor. There's a you know, a couple of medieval um, saddles which are really quite rare um, to see. Um, and there's a there's one in a museum in Prague which I thought was really interesting. Um, very high front and back. Oh, right. Which is actually quite dangerous when you're on a horse because if a horse falls, yeah, you can get stuck in. Is it like an Australian stock saddle kind of more, thing? Much more than that. Much more. Oh God. Yeah. Much oh, well. the front and back, yeah. Oh, God. The front comes up to about your belly button. Oh so if wow. You, if you tip forwards, you're gonna you're gonna yeah, feel it. Yeah, you're really gonna hurt your stomach. So yeah. they're they're safe when you're doing certain things, but they're really dangerous in other ways. So uh yeah, and the great thing about one of the issues I have with museum samples of things is were these things actually used or were these the things that were put on one side because they didn't work very well? Yeah. And that's yeah. why we still <laughs> yeah, that's why they're still good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not be used very much. It's, it's the so we went, yeah. That's yeah. rubbish. Well, what should we do with it? Put it on the wall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How we found yeah. treasure. It's <laughs> hanging yeah. on the wall. <laughs> Whereas somebody's, somebody's favorite sword or favorite knife or whatever it might be, that probably just got used up and then thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So do you have your own saddle maker or what what kind of saddles are you using? I, I tend to ride normally I ride in uh, in Zaldi saddles that are Spanish, Spanish modern saddles with a bit mm. of a high front and a back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a bit of a deep seat. Um <clears throat> but I do have custom saddles made. I've got four four medieval saddles that are custom fit to me and the horses I ride them. Mm. Yeah. So uh, there's a variety of different places uh, that, that make them. But you, you've got to find somebody you can work with um, that knows about saddles as well as about history. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's at the end of the day, horse comfort is the most important thing you've got to Yeah, yeah without out. it, you will not get anywhere. Or yeah. you have problems in the long run, yeah. yeah. Exactly yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a, a set of um, of arms? Uh, you know, a coat, a, of, arms. A coat oh, of arms. Yes, I do have a coat of arms. Yes, I am. As the phrase goes, I am armidurous. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can admit now that I'm armidurous. I have my own arms. Um, yeah, I I was granted uh, by the Herald of Arms called Blue Mantle Persuivant, who is uh, the College of Heralds in London. Mm. So yeah. I was granted my own my own coat of arms. Uh, oh. I can't remember it offhand now, but basically, I can't say it in Latin, but basically it's got two jousting lances and a unicorn horn. It's got three. It's got jousting lances and a unicorn oh. horn in the middle. Oh, wow. wow. Red and my That's awesome. Red and silver. Oh, my God. Awesome, sir. <laughs> you're, living the, you're living the dream. Living the dream. I am. I'm really lucky, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so so my, my surname's Stuart as well. So all, we've got the, the coat of arms from cause the Stuart clan from Glasgow. Sort of all the, yep. the Scottish. So that's where all my relatives yeah. sort of they have their own. I think that's the Lord Lion. I think there's a, the Scottish heraldry is a separate thing to the English heraldry. Yes. So I think that's Lord, Lord Lion, the court of the Lord Lion, which is a very cool name. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Def, you have what, a Lord Lion. What was it like when you met the Queen to be knighted? Because first of all, congratulations I, on that and well deserved. Well, I wasn't knighted. I got my OBE. Your OBE, uh, yes. So it's a, OBE, yeah. Not quite a knighthood. Not quite a knighthood. Um, <clears throat> it was incredibly intimidating. Um, <laughs> it was also really, really fun and really funny. Um, they, they, they ask you, they, they, they know the people who are running it know that you're going to be really, really nervous. So they're all very brilliant at looking yeah. after all these, people. um, and they, they, they want to keep it going quickly as well. Cause you know, yeah. they've got to get through this quite yeah. briskly. So basically they give you these instructions. So you stand ready to go. And there's a chap standing by you with the, with the, um, uh, white gloves on. Yeah. And they say, uh, when the ne when the person before you, you, you don't take your cue from the person before you, you, you take the cue from your name. You start going when you hear the first syllable of your last name. Oh, my God. Um, and they said, no and, and this, is, this is brilliant. They said, people forget their own names. Yeah. yeah. So no, if you forget no. your name, everybody's going, what? Uh, but apparently <laughs> people do. 
don't worry because we'll push you gently in the back. <laughs> so they, they've got it all organised. And if you yeah. go too soon, we'll stop you as well. <laughs> they, right. they, they, put <laughs> like, they, they won't let you go. So it's like, oh, no. Um, no, no. So they're trying to keep it very organised. And the, yeah, the, the, I have to say that the, the Buckingham Palace was absolutely <laughs> brilliant at organising this. They were super slick, super professional, very, very well organised. And it was absolutely fantastic experience. But it was Prince Charles. Yeah. Um, and the, the tricky thing is you have to back down steps to go oh, yeah, to the way you yeah. can't turn around. Oh, so you gosh. go up these little steps. Yeah. And you, you know, you, you yeah. say a few words and he shakes your hand and you're, your hand being shaken is the cue for you to now bugger off. Okay. <laughs> be gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be gone. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Shakes your hand, and that is your cue. Now you've got to go, right? Yeah. And the, you can't turn around. You have to back. <laughs> so you have to back down <laughs> steps. steps. Oh, no. In front of this audience. So you back down these steps, and then you turn, you go the other way out of the, you go back around behind the yeah. scenes, yeah. behind the stage, basically. Um, and there they hand you your 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 OBE, your medal, yeah. or whatever it yeah. is, uh, and w- which is which is a little bit of a, a grounding moment because you suddenly realise there's a whole stack of boxes of other people's awards <laughs> there as well. And there's a whole bunch of different ones out there as well. Yeah. So um, it was absolutely wonderful experience. Buckingham Palace is magnificent and and very yeah. grand. Um, and the people were very, very polite and kind. It was a, uh, it was a but very what an experience, though. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Who, who went nervous. with you? Um, it was uh, you. Were, you're allowed three people. Yeah. So from your family, so everybody's allowed three people to go with yeah. you, and uh, right. and there's a, there's a dress code as well. So all the women have to wear things called fascinators. Yeah. Fascinators. Which is, yeah. Yeah. Which is a bit of a, they're kind of hats, but not hats. <laughs> yeah. They're just like a, they're yeah. like a prom. A, well, thing thing a, 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 yeah. beer, a beer mat with something sticking out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like rubbish <laughs> armor. Rubbish <laughs> armor. Yeah, very rubbish strange armor. thing, I think. And they're, they're all they're all sort of sticking out at funny angles. So yeah. um, uh, it was it was wonderful. It was a really good experience and very well done. And obviously, a crowd of people outside Buckingham Palace as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, might get to go another day. You never know. One day I'll get yeah. to go to Buckingham Palace again, perhaps Definitely. for the knighthood. Well. You never know. It's not impossible, is it? Well, no. I, I think that, never know what's around the corner. I think we should do a campaign to make you a knight because you are, you are a knight. <laughs> yeah, we can exactly. we can send we can send them videos of you on a horse. You are a knight. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have to apply to go with your horse in your yes. armor. <laughs> I did. I, I wonder if you were would be allowed in armor. You probably wouldn't. They probably the police would probably stop you. Yeah, yeah. that'd be slightly frowned upon. I think. Especially if you come with a special weapon. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> ride, through, ride through the gates of Buckingham Palace on yeah. your white horse. Yeah. Yeah, but how yeah. cool would that look, though? Wow. It would be very cool. Yeah, I have to get special permission. <laughs> so, so what? What yeah. is what is the um, rebellion head office like? Does that does that have like um, Judge Dredd statues or in it or sort of there armor? A, and... big, yeah, yeah. There's a big Judge Dredd statue in reception. Um, the office itself is fairly nondescript, kind of deliberately because we yeah. we don't really have facilities for sort of yeah. members of the public to yeah. not a theme park as such. So yeah. uh, we don't really encourage visitors. But um, you know, it's it's got lots of posters up and lots of toys and lots of bits and bobs everywhere. Like it's a it's a kind of very big open plan office. With lots of computers in it. Basically. <laughs> yeah. I, I just seen, by the way, Doug just explained to everybody in the world what an OBE, OBE. is because obviously, <laughs> obviously, people don't know what OBE means. Uh, so our, thank our you, American Doug. American friends, yeah, thank you, Doug. Yes. Yeah. So right. it is a it is a minor it is a minor one of the more minor um, honors uh, you can get. It's I think it's about level three out of level out of six. So I'm third. I'm a third level. Basically, I'm not not at the top, not at the bottom, yeah. but somewhere in the middle. Yeah, but um, that's good. You're moving up, room, moving up. Yeah, so it means I'm technically an officer of the Order of the British Empire. Uh, wow, which would, be o, would be OOBE as well, really, wouldn't it? Not just OBE, yeah. but yeah, yeah. We, we, we do. And you do get you get a you get a um, you get a little medal you can wear, and you get instructions on how and where you're supposed to wear it, and all sorts. Oh, and, um, yeah. Unfortunately, there isn't a secret society that I'm aware of yet. I haven't been invi- invited to join any secret organisation. No, 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 secret no, 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 handshake. handshake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be initiated into some kind of uber secret society, but no. 
afraid not. Oh, no. 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 Maybe, maybe, <laughs> not maybe, yet. <laughs> yeah, after the COVID lockdowns gone. Yeah, it's probably... <laughs> 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 yeah, need... <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah. So, do, do you... Are there any other questions? I'm sorry. Do, do, do you collect <laughs> a lot of medieval um, equipment? So I know you make stuff. Um, do, do you have like a weaponry or... Or a uh, armory, or I, I do. I, I do have an armory. Yeah, I have an armory because I've got sharp weapons. They've got yeah. to be sort of locked away, basically, yeah. but just for my safety, really. And some of them are <laughs> quite big, and heavy. So um, things are things are locked away, and uh, 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 for for my own protection. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't have any actual original pieces of yeah. medieval equipment. Because uh, they really all should belong in a museum. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do have lots of authentic reproductions, um, and that that makes it fun because you can experiment with them without feeling guilty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which, what what do, what 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 do rebellions insurers make of your um, rather sedate pastimes? <laughs> well, actually, I had it. I did have a conversation with the insurers. I had to do a special. I had to fill in a special form because of the jousting. Jousting is. <laughs> there are two sports that are more dangerous. There are two sports that are more dangerous than jousting in a higher category. Um, I think Formula One racing driving and right. cave diving. Oh, gosh. And those are in the those are in the top category of you number three. Probably, oh, base jumping. So three. Oh, base yeah, jumping. Yeah. yeah. So ba- base jumping is the most dangerous. If you base jump, you can't get insurance. Right. Because you will die if you're a base jumper Eventually. within yeah. four Eventually, years. Yeah. 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 yeah, there are basically there are very few veteran base jumpers. They're yeah. all they're all they're all novices because once you yeah, get yeah. to you, you basically people very sadly die yeah. doing it. Um, yeah. Formula this... One and cave diving are insurable, but they're in the uh, top category. And then jousting, they decided to put in the category below it. <laughs> um, but but actually, all horse riding is actually quite dangerous. Yeah, yeah, you know, all horse horse riding, yeah. Just yeah. going on the straddle. Yeah. yeah, because people fall off. Yeah. Horses, horses are one of the few items of sporting equipment that has its own mind. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my, I ride no motorbike. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my motorbike's got its own bloody mind. Anything else? I mean, imagine if you yeah. played tennis and your tennis racket was having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or it was scared of a, a crisp packet on the floor. Yeah, exactly. Like horses Suddenly do. Yeah. Tennis yeah. racket goes over this <laughs> way. <laughs> So, so it's, it's a teamwork. It's teamwork with yeah, another living creature. Yeah. Why? Spook the tennis it's so wonderful. Yeah, definitely. I bet you must have fun at uh, dinner parties when they're sort of saying, you know, well, my hobby's golf. What's yours? Well, <laughs> funny you should ask. Lately. I nearly got into a fight because I told somebody <laughs> what I did and they accused me of being a liar. <laughs> what? Seriously? Yeah. And I, I said, I'm not lying. Yes, you are. You're lying. I went, no, I'm not. Nobody jousts. <laughs> yeah. Nobody jousts. I said, yeah, well, I do. I've got pictures and everything. Yeah, and he, got, yeah. he was quite angry with me for lying. Oh. He was just jealous. <laughs> you lived yeah. his dream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I must admit, for re- Rebellion as well, you must be one of the best bosses in the world because who else can say their boss does jousting? Uh, and is just a really awesome, cool person, and, and you know, out there living his life and, and having fun and living the dream. So, well, yeah. well, I hope I hope I amuse my I hope I amuse the people that work with me, my my team members. You know, I don't know whether they think I'm a complete lunatic or or partly a lunatic and partly fun. Um, I, I'll leave I'll leave whether I'm a good boss for others to judge, though. So that's that's probably I'm the worst person to judge whether I'm any good or not. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, that's yeah. it. You can't say I'm a good judge. Yeah. No, but yes. it's, I think it's the English eccentricity, which is which is a tradition, really, isn't it? Well, I think it should. Be. I think we should build Great. on that. I think yeah. I think all yeah. all people in in Britain should try to be more eccentric. I think we need more eccentricity. Yeah. I think everybody needs to get a, <laughs> a bit more of a sense of humour, no. and I think we all need to be a bit bonk, more bonkers. I think yeah. we'd have a much more fun society if we were all a bit more crazy and uh, and 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 filled with uh, fun and. Silly ideas. Definitely. Yeah, it would yeah. be much easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. Instead yeah, of holding back and saying, I'm, I'm, I don't tell you. Yeah, and then just yeah but so many people are worried about what other people think of them. And I think, well, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I don't. You no, know, no. Well, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're amongst people that don't worry about what Yeah, yeah that's it. But there are a lot of people who do, yeah. You know? Yeah, but you don't live for other people. You live your own life. 
exactly and life's short as well and the yeah. older you get the more you realize it is yeah. and so if you haven't had fun on the way when are you yeah. going to have fun? Exactly. Yeah. Cool yeah. adventures i mean the whole post-apocalyptic world is about you know having fun in a in a world that hopefully doesn't exist yet might do one day you never know <laughs> yeah, exactly. so with like-minded people and that's what you know reenactment historical reenactment allows you to do that you learn about the past as well and and, it, and it's unusual uh, but it also reflects across into your everyday life because you don't see things quite the same way as other people and yeah, you see no, it totally in totally also we would love to invite you um to either wasteland weekend over in america or over to australia for the mad max 40 year anniversary and uh if we can entice you to one of these massive festivals we would be honored for you to come on stage with us uh <laughs> it's it. it's awesome we've got snow cannons war boys thunder sticks it's 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 chaos it's eccentric. It brilliant. I, I, I'll have to. I'll have to have a look at some. Have you got videos of we your have, shows? We I will on? send. Oh, I'll yeah. send them over. <laughs> last year, it, it. last year it was uh, the Wasteland Weekend over in LA. Their their ten year anniversary. So us being from sort of uh, uh, mechanizers from Germany, but the rest of us are from England. Uh, we had we were the first band to ever take giant snow cannons out to the Mojave Desert, and we covered everybody in snow uh, yeah, yeah. during the during yeah. the festival during the gig, and it was just half the people had never seen snow before. It was just crazy. It was brilliant. Brilliant. Sounds fantastic. What a wonderful experience. Well done, you guys. That's brilliant. It was. It was crazy. Just living the dream. Yeah. We will we will send them over. So I think we're just coming to the end of the show. Is there anybody uh, <laughs> you would like to, to do a shout out to, uh, Jason? No, just thank you for, for having me on the show and I hope I haven't talked too much. I have a, no, I have a habit was... of getting totally excited about talking about things. So <laughs> Yeah, it was a pleasure to have you on the show yeah. and we're really grateful that you joined us. <laughs> thank you very much and thank you to everybody who's watching. Definitely, yeah. Well, what this goes out on YouTube. This also goes out as a podcast tomorrow, and it goes on Facebook Live, so it gets shared all over the place. Uh, we would also really? love to have you back on at some other time as a, as a guest, and we we'll maybe get some uh, maybe Emil Minty or a few of the other Mad Max actors on with you, so you can you can you can have a chat with these guys. And, uh, That'd be brilliant. Be, yeah, I'd love be, that. That'd be really lovely. Thank you. And, and if you could put a word in with Carl Urban, we'd love to have him on. <laughs> yeah. Carl, um, yeah I, 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 I might have his phone number, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> also, 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 Olivia was amazing as Anderson in yeah, the film as yeah. well. So yeah, was, if there yeah. was ever a Mega City uh, TV show, I think she is just was awesome she was actually yeah awesome. they're both they're, they're, she's, they're, she's a very good actress isn't she she's been in yeah. some amazing stuff yeah. yeah so yeah yeah she'd be great to have on yeah awesome well thank you very much sir have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend and say hello to all your horses um, i will <laughs> uh, mechanized anything from you before we go no everybody stay safe Put on your masks next week oh, yeah, because we're... you want that this flipping virus disappears because I'm sick of it. Exactly. We've now, got, it. We've now got our own masks as well. So, <laughs> so, so we can all... band camp shop. From, from the shop itself. We, we can go shopping. Excellent. So thank you, everybody. And next week we oh, have... Hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Oh. Well, I just want to say um, good luck to Captain Mayhem. Um, um, oh, yeah, he's moving. He's moving. Basically put the, um, the the war boys together for Wasteland Weekend and the everything else. Uh, yeah, he's changing jobs um, after 15 or 18 years and moving out of Cal of um, California. So there's a long well drive in front of him. Goes well, yeah, lovely guy, good really night. nice guy. Have a good road trip. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, what are you just... <laughs> exactly. Right. And and next week we have we've got AD from the Mad Max Museum, this mad guy from Lancashire, uh, and Melvin. Uh, Melvin said this French guy who does all documentaries all over the world and he's absolutely awesome so we, uh, we've got those two guys on next week uh, which is going to be awesome and the week after we've got a lady called uh, Dinah, Dana who was the you know, Furiosa yeah. uh, in stunt Fury double. Road the stunt double for her yeah. So she's awesome. She's amazing. She's yeah. been in loads of films. Uh, so uh, we've probably got a few other guests coming on to ask her a few questions because she's she's uh, been in virtually everything out there. So that'll be good. Excellent. Well, cheers, everybody. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.
Good night, everyone. Thank Stay you. safe. Right. Yep. Take care out there. Ha <laughs> ha.